watch and listen the most powerful testimony of three sisters who were delivered from Sweet Queen Spirit and Jezebel Spirit. Watch as they testify and give the testimony. Watch and listen the most powerful testimony, the most powerful secret of Jezebel Spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. I want to thank you all for your time that you take to watch this video and our testimony of what the Lord has done in our lives. So I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Sharon and this is Sister Bandile, Sister Angela. So we want to share our testimony. Remember what the word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, that we shall overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So please lead us with a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you during this time. We ask for your presence to fill this place. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be embedded in our mouths. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said we must not be afraid of what we are going to say to the nations. But you said the Spirit, it will lead and tell us. So now in this time, Lord, we surrender ourselves. We surrender our wills, even our minds, in the mighty name of Jesus. That you may tame our tongues in the mighty name of the Lord. That we may not add or omit in the mighty name of Jesus. We may not make an example exaggeration for the views but we Jesus we must say the truthful and stick to the facts in the mighty name and let everything be in your glory and in your honor now and forever amen thank you so I'm gonna start by saying um, the Lord is good and is faithful um, my testimony is to show the glory of God and it's for the glory of God of what is done in my life. It's not by my power, it's not by my might, but by His Spirit. God has done great things in my life and I'm here to encourage women out there who want to go through um, holiness and it's the kind of separation you have to go. Uh, through you have to surrender your life to Jesus Christ you have to deny yourself to Christ you have to come to him and just give your life to him fully not thinking about opinions of men not thinking of what people are saying about your life and you believe that Jesus Christ can change you it doesn't matter how wicked you are God is faithful he can change your life he changed me I was dressing like a harlot I was going through a lot of stuff in my life I didn't know what people was I didn't know what happiness was but Christ came when I repented my sins to Christ I was tired of the worldly life it's all about material you're just looking after many men and all these things of the world just to fill your heart but only God can fill that heart there. If there's un somebody out there who is depressed, I went through depression. If there's anybody out there who is lacking that fatherly love and you've lost your parents and you don't have anybody to look to, just look to Jesus. Don't look unto the things of the world to fill that void that your parents left and you feel like you have nobody out there. You don't have a father, you don't have a mother. Then don't take also that as an opportunity to do insane things in this world. You see, we do not understand uh, what we think what we are doing is good for us, but it's not. Christ loves us. Christ loves you. Jesus loves you. He's ready to change your life. He needs needs you he needs to transform your life he can do it he can do it from that uh, kind of depression and that spirit of anxiety that you're going through and doubt believe he says in his word believe and you see his glory so read the word of God from first Peter mm -hmm, verse 15 I'll start from 14. As an obedient child, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy because I am holy. Um, when I came to Jesus Christ, I was coming from, uh, I, I used to go to church just like a normal Christian. 
I didn't encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't. I thought I just go to church. I don't have to change. I just have to have invite Christ in my heart. Mm-hmm. And just when I invite Jesus in my heart, it's about me controlling Jesus. If it's about money, it doesn't have to come into my clothing. Jesus come into my heart, not into my mind. You will not control what I see. You will not control what I listen to. You will not control my heart, how I feel that you how I used to feel but when i when i came to jesus christ but first before i came to christ just like i was saying uh when you don't have like someone to look up to and you are there uh you're depressed and all these things in the world are coming up to you and you're living in ignorance i was being tormented by a spirit of death because I was still attached to my parents and I wanted that fatherly love. I wanted it so much uh, to a point like when you have the spirit of death tormenting you, I had fear. You see, we have not received the spirit of fear, but we've received the spirit of power, love and of sound mind. So when I go to sleep, I see dead people, coffins and stuff. So I'm worried that if I die today, I'm going to, if I sleep today, I'm just going to die and I will not wake up. I hear voices, evil voices that I am nothing. You're nothing. You just can do nothing. Everything you touch doesn't prosper. And then I didn't want to buy the voices, those were speaking, those voices that were speaking to me. And I got to a point that I was so lost and I used to cry and I was asking God, why did you take my parents? I just want my life back. And I was even like trying, beginning now to come into point that dying is all good. To die is, is like perfect thing to do. But where are you going without Christ? I did, had nothing to to be happy for. So one night when I was staying outside and still meditating and just uh, thinking about it, I had a voice that said, come to me, come to me. You need God, you need God. And that's how it didn't begin from church. It just, Lord, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. He loves us. When we are going, he sees our mistakes. He sees everything that we are going through. He knows the deep things of our heart. And when I heard that voice, I first didn't understand what was happening to me. And I thought, maybe it's the same evil voice that gives me fear. But when I listened closely and I just kept, when that voice spoke to me, I felt peace. Then I wanted to begin to understand where do I get this peace from? That voice was so peaceful. I didn't believe in supernatural. I didn't believe at all. So one night, um, I just took my Bible and just I wanted to read the scriptures. And when I took the Bible and I began to read the Bible, I don't know, just I felt this joy. And when I felt joy, I began to think this might be it for me. It's Jesus it might be my answers to what I'm going through. It's not the things of the world. Um, when I was being depressed, I looked up to men for that fatherly advice and an elderly advice. We see people, they just use you. So when you're there, you're looking up to people's opinions. They tell you, get a good job, get married do all this, slay in this life. Uh, I used to dress like unhallowed. I just, nakedness was my thing. Uh, I never thought that Jesus would change someone like me. So I still had that mentality. If Jesus can change me, then Jesus can change my heart because I was unforgiving, I had pride. And I just, I deep down, I knew I am a good person. But something else is controlling my life. It's taking control of everything that I have. It's giving me nightmares. And then when I read my Bible, I just was there. And then I felt that calmness and that joy. And that was the beginning of what the Lord began to separate me from worldly pleasures. Um, I was addicted to pornography masturbation um just please just give me a moment please oh god thank you 
God has really done a lot for me. She's being a slave in the world mm -hmm. is not something so easy. So I used to wear trousers, I used to apply makeup. One thing that really, uh, when you're in the world, when you apply makeup, you look more beautiful and manipulating and deceiving. And people just, you just love to attract men. You just love to let people out there see how beautiful you are. And then all your focus is on fashion, material possession. I want to be better day and day. You're focused on what makes pleases the flesh, not what pleases uh, God. And I didn't like who I was. Sometimes I would say to myself, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with this life. I have all the money in the world. I have all the things that I'm doing. I had a good career. I've been a journalist. And I have all these good things going around with me, traveling the world just it was all for me because i thought if i can afford to go on a holiday a good holiday just spend some time doing wicked things going to clubs partying i thought that was life but i gained nothing from that world i gained nothing from that life it's a worldly life you gain nothing from it you come out a loser you come out with nothing no joy you see god's things are spiritual and you cannot see them with hands you can buy joy you can buy peace you can buy love jesus is the one who gives every kind of peace and when you give him your peace your attention is going to give you everything that you desire the things that we desire here on earth the things that can not give us an eternal life, that the things that are going to, uh, the things of this world that we desire, we are so focused on money, our career, um, our families, pleasing our loved ones, relationships, fornication, because I was also a fornicator. I can tell the truth that fornication, you get nothing from fornication. Sex before marriage is a sin. I condemn it. It's just a sin. We should not have a um, relationship. You just keep on allowing people to use you and people to use you. And you know, you are, you are like a jewel before God. You're a treasure to God. He gave his own begotten son for you. And he needs you. He needs your heart. Your body is not to be used by men. Your body is not to be used by people who just want doing what they want to do to please their soul. It's not good. So Jesus, when he gives us peace, when he gives us that joy, we begin to realize his love. When he pours the fatherly love in your heart, you need to be baptized. You need to be baptized by the fire of the Holy Spirit. You need to receive the Holy Spirit. Most people ask the question, what, how do you change? How can you change so quickly? It's not by your power. You can't change by your power. You can drop trousers that you've been slaves for 20, 20 years of your life and you just drop the trousers just like that. It's impossible. Even you yourself personally, for me, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, it comes to clean, to cleanse. It cleanses your body, cleans you up so you can be what God wants you to be. When the Holy Spirit comes, he is holy. Remember the word of God says, be ye holy. We say it, we read in First Peter. It says in verse 15, chapter 1, it says, be ye, 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. You need to be holy. You can be holy without the Holy Spirit. You can be holy without receiving that power. That power changes you. That power separates you, makes you to become a bride of Christ. From, it changes you from a harlot, from the worldly bride to the bride of Christ. When he changes, you can call Jesus. To me, I want to be holy. Lord, I want to be holy. You have to repent your sins. You have to come to him. You have to cry to him and tell him, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know you do not hear prayers of wicked people, but I want you to change me because I'm ready, ready to believe. You say, if you believe, we'll see your glory. So clean me from my heart. I want to true uh, character of Jesus in my life. I want to represent character of Christ in my life, not what i want you can take scriptures and take what you want christ to be 
You have to be who Jesus Christ wants you to be, not you to com direct Christ. It's not you to command Jesus. You must obey his commands. So when it comes to that, you have also to understand the things you're doing. Makeup has got a spirit behind it. If you're applying makeup, you're calling in Jezebel. Jezebel has a spirit. This is, she's the only woman, when you look in the scripture, who was applying makeup. Why are you applying makeup when God created you beautiful? If this God calls it beautiful, I don't care what everybody in the world says about beauty. Beauty is not fake. It's not the fake things that we want to do. This pleases God, and that is enough with me. If your natural beauty, that is what pleases God. If you wanted to have your lips red, you'll have them red. By now, if you wanted your nails to be green, you will have them green. But he created you because he loves you the way you are. In the world, we are deceived that we have to be more beautiful so that people can love us why we should we focus then on the love of men rather than focusing on the love of god it's not the love of men that is going to save our souls it's not the love of god that is going to deliver us from the bondage and the captivity that we are in it is the love of christ and that is the love that we have that is the love that we desire that is the love everybody should have and when uh you realize that christ is the only one who can change he separated me from the spirit of fornication so he can separate you I know many people say think that having a boyfriend or girlfriend is nothing. It's just like a, a usual thing for a Christian. But a Christian, we do not date. We already, when that father love is there, it's like your heart is taken to your king of kings. And you've given his heart. It's like when my time comes for me to be married or have a, uh, my, my husband or my wife, you are the one to awaken he gives to awaken my soul for that because when he's filled with the love of god it is all that matters it is all that matters without experiencing that love you cannot separate yourself from the world and without knowing who jesus is truly knowing his his plans for your life his assignment for your life his calling for you you cannot understand uh the the bigger part the cost of separation so i encourage women out there please let's embrace holiness when we are holy even the world will know that there is christ in you they must see the christ in me because nobody can see jesus in your heart unless you bear the fruits of holiness and righteousness in your life watch and reason the most powerful testimony of three sisters who were delivered from sweet queen spirit a Jezebel spirit. Watch as they testify and give the testimony. Watch and reason the most powerful testimony, the most powerful secret of Jezebel spirits. Greetings again in the name of the Lord. Um, my name is Bandile. And I was also held up in the world. My story began in 2010. I was 16. I got saved. That's when I first got saved. And I went back to the world because I thought, I am young and I'm a virgin. Come on. I still got life to live. So I went back from Jesus to the world. That's when everything, the world started running off. And I remember while I was still in the in Jesus, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, but I was wearing trousers. And he said to me, are you willing to go to hell just because of trousers? Because I didn't want to let go of my trousers. I was wearing my skinny jeans, like they could show everything, everything. And I was baptized with the, with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of the tongues. So imagine, I can see dreams and vision and things that are going to happen and I'm baptized. So I thought, you know, because I'm a virgin, I'm not dating anybody. So now I understand that wearing a trouser can actually take you to hell. Because that was the only thing I was doing was wearing my trousers. So I went back to the world. That's when things started to get really bad. That's when the devil started exploring with my body. I got so addicted to pornography that I would just, every time I'd want space away from people just to go and, 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 and masturbate. I was a slave to this demon. It will come to me and then I, I'd feel even sick. If I, I, I didn't do it, then it, it 
even in my body, I'd feel that something is wrong. I need to, I'd be moody, like I'd chase people away, I'd try to, in toilets, everywhere you can get a chance. So that happened. I was now experiencing with masturbation. Then, um, lesbianism. After I was bisexual, looking back, I was bisexual all my life in the world. I started experiencing with, with girls and for me, it was more pleasurable than with men. I'd feel more pleasure if I was with a girl than with a man. So it was really, I was really living in a dark world. It was very dark. And then the fashion came. It came back because I was listening to, there's an artist called Nicki Minaj. And then uh, I have seen that if you listen or follow this artist, then you, you kind of like giving them authority over your body and your spirit and whatever spirit they pos that possesses them will come into you. So now I'm into lesbianism. I'm, I'm fornicating with m myself. And then um, I'm also listening to this rap thing. I was, I was, then I turned into this very moody person. I was rebellious at school because all this while they know me as this innocent girl, Christian, Christian girl. Then I was very rebellious after that because this Nicki Minaj person is she. She swears a lot. I was starting to swear, post things on Facebook that are very offensive. Then I started having this thing that it's my body. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do with my body. I couldn't go to extreme because I was still living with my parents while I was still in high school. So the devil was waiting for me to finish high school and go off and go explore more. So I'd like to read Mark 8. Mark 8 verse 36. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Dear brothers, Dear sisters and brothers, what good is it to gain the whole world? I had the whole world. I had men yeah. turning right here in my palm. I will just tap like this and men will, even married men when I was walking in the street, they will turn to look at me. There will be a fight. There will be a commotion between a wife and a husband. They will be winking on the side, wishing they can get my number. That's how powerful m the presence, my presence will affect people on the streets. I remember one day I was barely dressed almost naked and we were walking with my friend and then the whole town they were hooting people came out in the streets to hoot at us because of what we were wearing even at we climbed on the taxi they came and the taxi was doing like this they wanted us to come out they were taking videos that's how much power this jezebel spirit was having and if you, you are affected by this spirit, you make up everything, you know, you, when you look at yourself, the actual, the way God created you, 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 you no longer realize yourself you're like, this is ugly. I cannot walk outside like this. No, no, no. This is only for when I'm sleeping. But when you're going out, everything from the earrings, from, from the nails, everything has to be, to be coordinated, like blue earrings, blue this, blue eyes, this and that, you know, and from then you just Go onward. The more you, you dig in, in, into the world, the more you go up in, in the levels. You'd have, you go for, for more colorful hair. Then I had, I, I pierced my nose. I pierced my nose. I wanted to pierce my, my belly button, but it didn't work out. I, I tried, but my belly, my button got swollen. And I wanted to have a tattoo. Glory to God that didn't work out. Because right now I'll be having a tattoo that I don't know how to hide. Because it would be in places that were showing. I wanted one here. So imagine me preaching to people with a tattoo. So I thank God very much. And my sisters, you can you can go out in the you can go out from the world in the mighty name of Jesus because when he comes into your life, when you're ready for him, he comes and he claims and he washes everything. He washes your sins away. Cause I remember there's a picture of me. I, I had a Rihanna style. I shaved my my other half of my head. And I went to church like this. Actually, in that church, in the church I, I, I fellowship in, in South Africa, they applauded me. They said, you look very beautiful. With that hairstyle, with that makeup and, and everything, and with the dress that was showing my legs, and, and everybody was admiring my legs. But now, when I'm wearing like this, they don't understand me.
they don't understand it. They're like, you're hiding your body. They're calling me mom. Even people who are, who are the same age as me, they're like, um, you, you're making yourself older. Like, they don't understand that this is, supp you're supposed to look like this if you're holy. If you're a child of God, you're supposed to be looking like this. It's not because you have to be married or you're hiding your body. No, it comes with the norm. Be a Christian, look like this in Jesus' name. Amen. They're like, ah, oh, but the Holy Spirit didn't tell me, or, or this and that. It was, they like, it was in the Old Testament, so uh, we're not bound by law anymore. Jesus did away with the law, so we, we, we're with grace. Does grace give us the license to sin? If you're still out there and you're a Christian, and you're still looking like a Jezebel, and you're walking in those hills, I tell you, God said, because the daughter of Zion are walking, tinkling with their feet, meaning they're wearing heels, they're walking like a goat. Even the doctors, when the doctors, because there's a, a, an NGO that I used to go to, they forbid us to wearing heels because they said science proves that if you're wearing heels, even when you get old, you, you, your, your, your leg will be defected. So if science, if doctors refuse this thing, how much more to God? It's, just, it's an abomination. So we must leave it, fellow. This, you, you see this, this is very cheap. To be a virtuous woman, it doesn't cost a lot. It's, you have peace. It's very cheap. And when I was still a Christian wearing like a halot, I'd have men. You know, men would come like flies. And then now we have too much temptation. You have to be ducking and diving. Because they see this and you wonder why. I'm a Christian and, and I do this. But it's, it's what you're wearing. That's all. It changes. It doesn't. T you say one thing about. We say one thing with your, with your mouth, and you do something with your body. So we need to change. In the mighty name of Jesus, we it can be done. It is possible. It doesn't matter how far you've gone with the devil. Jesus is there to take you out. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus before Jesus comes back or before He comes to claim your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. Watch and reason the most powerful testimony of three sisters who were delivered from Sway Queen Spirit and Jezebel Spirit. Watch as they testify and give the testimony. Watch and reason the most powerful testimony, the most powerful secret of Jezebel Spirit. Um, praise Jesus. Um, my name is Angela Mutua, and um, I used to live a worldly life. Um, most people would ask, what do you mean when you say a worldly life? Worldly life is um, um, everything that the world does, it's, it's okay for the world, and everything that you do as a born-again Christian, you are, you, people look at you as weird. Um, the people who are so much filled with the Antichrist spirit would want to say you, you are involved in a cult and such kind of weird stuff. Now, um, when I used to, to live in the world, um, the worst, the worst um, thing that I felt I dealt with was the spirit of masturbation, which started as a joke and it escalated to something really big. I think that's the biggest demon I've, I've ever fought in my life. Um, and this began when I was pretty young, and it began like a joke. It began like a joke, and it really escalated to something really, really big, whereby I felt, um, man, I mean, I, I really demeaned men, and I really felt there's nothing you can give me, there's nothing you can do to satisfy me there's nothing you can offer me as a woman and i really grew up because i lacked the f the love of a father i really grew up feeling men are just like you know you know whatever i just get out of my way i felt like a superwoman i felt like i'll do anything and i really started earning young so i f i could provide for myself and even when I was in campus, uh, I was in the film industry. I was really dealing with the spirit of masturbation from a very young age. And um, that was the gross feeling. I, I, I used to commit other sins, but when I commit this specific sin, I'll feel very filthy. So, so, so filthy. And it was so bad until now it started manifesting that I was tied up in the spiritual realm whereby uh, 
people you I'm so sure if you're a spiritual person you've heard of um, the spiritual husband and the spiritual wife so I was battling with the spiritual husband like day in day out so I used also to drink mm. I would drink it started with wine it escalated from wine to you know to hard drinks and um, I was good in psychology and since I never gave respect to men since I felt um, this superwoman, um, Anin and all that, um, it, it kind of uh, made me feel as if um, I, I used to have this like kind of a supernatural strength. So from drinking, I used also to smoke. Mm. Yes, I'll smoke a packet a day. So <laughs> I've done all that. And actually, it didn't satisfy anything. I lacked the love from a father. But what I was looking for from these men, from messing with their brains, actually, in campus, they used to call me Generali. That was my nickname. Walikuwa Anita Generali, Chief, eh, Commander in Chief. Because I used to mess up with their brains. I used to, I used to play, I would, two men in one room, but none of them could notice are messing around with each of them and it has happened so my close friends used to call me generally this like the player version of a woman you know the player version of a woman and um even with the hills the hills give you a sense of pride a sense of you on top of the world so i even started wearing hills when i was um i think in um grade um grade six grade seven so i started wearing hills when i was pretty young and it escalated from like a three inch. I, I never used to put anything below six inch. Pretty, pretty high. And I would walk and yes, heads will turn. Yes, so, and the makeup also, I would put on makeup. Makeup, makeup, makeup. And um, it felt, I, I felt okay. I felt I'm doing, every, everyone is doing it, so why not? And um, so I used to drink masturbate for Nikate when I want. I felt like I want to use a man. To snap your fingers mm. and you use you any man you felt like, any man you'd felt like. And because I knew psycholo psychologically, I, I really wanted to do psychology back then. So I had like this kind of a gift whereby I, I will look at you as a man, and I know when I say this to you, if you say no, I know the other venue I would use or rather tactic I would use to, to put you uh, wrap you around my fingers so I was really really messing up with men's life I would really mess up their lives actually so just a single word or an action and I know exactly and actually what I calculated in my mind would reflect mm. to how they react to what I did to them so um, it didn't quench. All this didn't quench. All being called a eh, generally, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, and then funny enough, when you're doing all these evil things, people are praising you. Mm -hmm. They're praising you. And then I had this pride, like, in fact, the spirit of Jezebel was manifesting so much till when now a man wants to come and approach you. Their, their feet are, you know, they can't. They're like, no, 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 I can't talk to her. Just look at her. No, she's, you know, she's this and this and that. You go. No, 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 you go. So I, as in I felt, aha, uh -huh. come on, look at these chickens. <laughs> I, I felt like, you know, I've made it. Mm -hmm. Not knowing the spirit of Jezebel was really manifesting on me, like so bad and to the point where I hated men. I really, a, a woman would insult me. I would insult back and not react. But if a man dares, if a man dares even, <coughs> it's, 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 it's something different. I, I would react and actually I never used to care how tall you are, how masculine you are. I knew I would put you down. I had this abnormal strength. I would really, mm, I would really crush you. Because I felt I don't need to respect men. Look at what that man did to my mother. Look at these men, they don't deserve any respect. And I grew up with that. I grew up with so much bitterness. I grew up with so much anger. I was a very angry person. When you provoke me with the slightest, slightest thing, oy, especially the, the touts, the matatu touts, uh, they, they, they really faced the wrath. 
and the men who like sexually harass women they will really feel the wrath and also i also happen to go through rape so it really wasn't it really wasn't the feeling and the you know men are just you know beast they're just disgusting creatures to me like you can't tell me anything you can't help me with anything i can't bow down to you i can't do anything to i can't give you the respect you deserve in okay we'll talk we'll chat but when you decide to cross the line when you really try to hurt me this little i i'll really like there was this thing that like demonic fire like strength like i, I could bring down that area very fast mm -hmm. so that has been me from dressing like a harlot really you know short dresses mm -hmm. and heels was part of my wardrobe actually i don't know i think there's even a friend used to call me a shoe holic mm -hmm. i had so many so many pairs of heels so so many pairs of heels i never actually the flats i could carry them when now i'm heading home mm -hmm. when i just alight from the matatu i just exchange because i know it's a short distance but throughout the whole day i would go kilometers and kilometers in heels and i would feel nothing actually mm -hmm. i would really feel nothing so from all that from drinking from smoking from you know dealing with anger from dealing with all these things from the pain infliction of um the rape and um also some words that i faced when i was growing up someone happened to you know do the right thing and inflict words and curses when i was growing up mm -hmm. so all this pain i grew up a very bitter child even in high school the anger was still manifesting because i was like okay from since i was a kid this had, this has been happening to me so i felt like a, like you hate everyone like mm -hmm. I, i would pity women i would like accommodate women but for men <laughs> it was a different story so uh, my life changed started i felt the presence of god and i started changing when my mom was um she was admitted she went for a surgery and um she came out okay but then again the doctor's report was not that okay so they said it was a brain surgery so they said uh, the brain is swelling and um <coughs> when they induced her she 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 never woke up so my mom she was a prayerful person and she would really tell it straight to my face you have issues i i know where you coming from because all these things with rape and what i went through as a child mm -hmm. she was not aware of so she started understanding it from the spiritual perspective so she used to pray a lot and you know guide me and give me books to read of the demonic realm and everything but then again i was still in the world i was not i was not like i knew god i wanted to god but then again something was really holding me captive but then again something till today which i know it was god but i don't know how it happened in that room in that icu room that's when i think god did something he did something into my life because the the change was just instant i didn't say any sinner's prayer i didn't confess i didn't repent but i felt i hated sin so something spiritually happened and from that day when i was like saying god who oh, make my mother wake up and everything and there was a prayer i said if she's okay with you if she's okay with you spiritually take her but if she ain't please give her one more last chance to wake up and even confess and um i felt the peace of god that any normal person would not understand what i was really they were like even when when she passed when officially the doctor said she's gone there was this peace till i was actually and i'll say this i was forcing myself to cry because i didn't understand why this this peace i just lost my mom she's my, she was my mother she was my father mm. but then again you have an amazing peace and then i just realized three months after that because i used to masturbate more than actually 10 or even sometimes 15 times in a day mm. yes when you wake up that's the first thing i'll do mm -hmm. before i sleep mm -hmm. if i'm in the house hey, i'm not doing anything <laughs> to my bedroom I don't mind. yeah so i was really bound and then i realized ah it's then december then january february ah i've not done this thing what happened 
and I felt joy and I'm like, ah, you delivered me. And then I, I, I started seeking God. I started seeking God and um, the, then the manifestations of the spiritual husband started popping up because the devil was still fighting. I, I, I didn't have roots. I didn't have a church I would run to. I didn't have a spiritual father. Anyone you come, I'm dealing with this and this. It's like, come on, you're wasting my time. Can you just tell me you've been promoted and you know, you, you've earned, you've landed yourself 20 million. Those are the, I met with people like that. I didn't meet with someone who like, you know, you need to pray and fast. You need to stop doing A, B, C, D. So I got into the internet and I started following a certain lady. Uh, her channel is called Grace and Mercy Unto You. She's, a, she's an American. So with those kind of revelations I got, wearing pants, are wrong, makeup, indecent dressing. Then I started changing, which I got persecution from. I was told I'm in a cult. Uh, you know, I'm really behaving weirdly. Some actually thought it's the death of my mother that has affected me to this mm. stage to start behaving like that. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm just fine. I'm fine. And then eventually I came across um, Apostle Simon's uh, um, channel about um, the the testimony of Lillian Blessing and Anne Mudoni. And that's why I found myself in this church. Because holiness is not, it's not a cheap thing. Amen. It ain't a cheap thing. I remember I bought makeup worth, I don't know, five, six thousand, mm. some jewelries and stuff and I'd stocked new high heel shoes and at that moment I didn't know you have to throw them or burn them get rid of them I, I gave them away so because I, I, I was young and I didn't you know have someone to lift me up and tell me that you don't give them away since you're not using them it means you, you're not supposed to give to that person you're not su they're not supposed to use so throw or but there are some specific shoes for Gucci any time I'll sit in the sitting room, my shurak was pretty much in the, I could face it. So every time I'll, I'll just look at that B and I'm like, why does that shoe have a B? And every time I sleep, I'll know, I'll see those shoes. So there are some things I literally disposed, like earrings and those shoes, I burnt them. And when I burnt them, I remember the, the final product looks like um, the outer, whatever of a snake, mm. the outer, skin or rather the peeling off of a snake and uh, the, the smell stayed in that house for like two weeks mm -hmm. the smell of the burning shoe so that's when i fully embarked on the journey of holiness inward and outward um stripping off the trousers and the makeup and that it's not good enough mm -hmm. it's not good enough yes that's a step You've used your strength, you've denied yourself the makeup, you've denied yourself the pants. In Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, it says a, man, a woman should not put on a man's apparel and a woman, you know, vice versa. And so many people, you know, argue, oh, their pants made for women. I mean, I don't see men wearing skirts or dresses, so that should tell you something. Pants are meant for men, and dresses and skirts are meant for women. So... Um, it's it's not an easy journey, but if you are really if you are thirsty, if you are really thirsty, thirsty, I mean thirsty, and be real with God. He knows you, no matter how much you try to hide. He knows the weaknesses you had, those sins you've cultivated them years over that years. He can deliver you. Amen. It's not too. There's nothing too hard for him. Yes. You'll pass through challenges. You lose friends. I lost a job. I, I quit a job. I didn't lose. I quit a job whereby makeup was part of uniform. Mm. I quit at the airport. I quit a job. And um, what, I, what, what you are selling, if I look at the Bible and what it tells me, there's no way I can sell alcohol. Amen. And then say, ah, it's just a job. Come on. Who are you lying? You cannot go uh, and line up like the, the hoes in the street when they're selling their body and like, ah, I'm just keeping them company. <laughs> what are you doing there if you're not a prostitute yourself? So what was I doing there selling alcohol if I'm not working for the kingdom of darkness? Amen. Yeah, it was at the airport at the duty free. Well, the, the thing you pass through Terminal 1A, eh? you will meet, they have the red pants. Yeah. I, I used to work there. So there are some things... I gave up I, I, and I really got used because I didn't have the roots. God really used sickness to 
pull me out from there. Amen. Because any time I would like put on makeup, I'm like, the Bible says you obey your authority. And you yeah. know, so as in the devil tried confusing me. Mm -hmm. But then again, I was, my spirit was no, no, it was off. Then uh, God used my high potential to really shoot to an extent whereby I had dizzy spells and you know like I was sick I was really sick and actually one nurse told me choose your job or death mm. so I had to choose life and I quit that's when later on I realized ah, it's Jesus who made me get out from there so even the film industry some proposals still coming and I'm like there's no way I could be on that television set, even if I'm given a character that doesn't need makeup, Amen. I'll still use powder. Amen. I'll, my eyebrows will still be shaped. I'll still be forced to put on attires which are not godly. Mm. So I quit even film. Amen. Because you actually, we, I, I was in a program back then, I think 2007, 2008, which was a really famous program in Kenya already. So that's where my, my acting career began and it kept on going and going and then God later on revealed to me there's so much demonic things mm. that happen in these careers. Amen. Media is controlled by Satan. Amen. Media is controlled by Satan. So the, from the dressing, you can't say, oh God gave me, okay yeah, God gave me a talent, but this talent could be used to reach the gospel of God and not to entertain people using filthy language, yeah. using filthy dresses, mm -hmm. using that changing the, me, the, the, the way God created me, okay? Changing what God created me and using even cursing words because my, all my characters, I used to curse and it became part of my character in real life. I used to curse. I was a very proud woman and in, it, ma it started manifesting. So I came to realize later on, okay? And then, but then again, God is gracious. God is really gracious. So be... Be, be, be very careful with what you watch in those TV sets. Amen. I mean, what you see on TV is not really what. <laughs> on ground, things are different. Yeah. I trust. I tell you the truth. Things are totally different. Yeah. Because there are, some, there, are some, there are some careers which go hand in hand with some specific scenes. Let me use that kind of a language. Because I'll say this because I've been in the film industry. You find most people in the film industry are for high, should I, I raise them to, raise them to a higher standard of fornicators mm -hmm. and filthy language. I used to be one person and perverts, yeah. perverts, like everything you say, they misinterpret it. Everything you use a word, you didn't mean that. And it has to be interpreted sexually, apparently. You know, the weird thing I came to realize about this. So, fornicators, perverts, and drugs, alcoholism, they have no shame, especially fornicating. Most people, actually, I'll say 98, 99.9, .9, they have no shame. They have no shame fornicating. Personally, I will not mention anyone. Myself, we are, we call it the set. We are on the set preparing maybe for a scene. A man will just come and wrap his hands around you, probably fold your, you know, your private chest, private parts. Mm. Personally, I've, I've actually, we've even locked lips, and I'm not saying about it, me, my experience. You lock, you kiss, mbele awatu, no skia, you boo. You, you are not even ashamed. There's no shame in you. Because that's, it's like a tradition, it's like a character, it's like, something you are used to you drink you change in front of men you strip naked in front of men and you feel no shame i'm not mentioning anyone i'm mentioning myself and other cast other actresses and actors and when you are doing that tell me if, other, if you are changing and you're totally naked and he's also changing and he comes and grabs you know any part of your body whom do you blame? No one. But when he does that, you actually feel nothing. Actually, it's like your body is immune. It's like your feelings are, you know, circumcised. You feel nothing, totally nothing. And you are very much okay with it. So I would love to say God really snatched me from the pits of hell. Amen. And I'm here today. I've sacrificed a job. I've sacrificed those worldly things. And I'm still seeking him. 
is still pruning me Amen. to his perfection. Amen. Amen. Watch and reason the most powerful testimony of three sisters who were delivered from Sway Queen Spirit a Jezebel Spirit. Watch as they testify and give the testimony. Watch and reason the most powerful testimony, the most powerful secret of Jezebel Spirits. Uh, may God bless you, the viewers, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to interview the three daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ, who they were three queens, mm -hmm. but now they have been uh, turned to be uh, daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that there shall be a difference between Deborah and between the reader. Mm -hmm. The reader was a three queen, trade uh, so, uh, this, uh, this mighty man who was called. Uh, uh, Samson and so they are here to glorify God and I want to ask them some questions that, uh, that uh, according to their past life what changed them and how they were because I believe that uh, you have understood them who were they because for me I know them and uh, I have seen their pictures they send them they send me their pictures and they came they say that they want to follow now holiness and righteousness because they have been transformed by God through revelations, through the word of God, and also through their own encounters. And so I'm asking them a question. Because uh, you are a stray queen, according to how you are dressing, understand that you are still Christians. You are still following, you are still going to church. But now how you are dressing uh, naked and you are dressing shameful clothes, what, what were you achieving? What did you achieve in those things? Yeah, if, I don't know if I am putting it where, but I'm asking, what did you achieve in what you are doing? Okay. Yeah. What did I want to achieve? Mm -hmm. Prosperity, mm -hmm. uh, fame, mm -hmm. uh, money. Mm. So I was focused on material stuff mm. Mm. or material, not realizing that spirit is greater than material. Mm. Before anything happens in the physical world as mm. manifested already in the spirit realm. So I was focused on attention. I wanted to be loved. Mm. You see, the world cannot love you. Mm. Uh, the only love that we can experience is the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that because I was lacking fatherly love. I wanted like to feel that love just from losing my dad and my mother oh. and you need someone to just guide you and talk to you in a way that can help you but you see that you have to look up to men so men they end up using you and then you miss everything mm -hmm. so that was what I was trying to achieve and then my career in my career I wanted to get status I wanted to go higher and higher in my career. So it doesn't matter what I have to do, whether I have to lie, whether I have to uh, sleep around, hmm. get my ranks, that's, that doesn't matter. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So you say that, uh, according to me, I hear that you are achieving what you are looking, you are achieving material. That is what you are running for. Material, money, and attention. Yeah. You see, and that is a good uh, uh, answer. When you see them, they are looking for attention. That's why they are, they, are, they are dressing like that, because they are looking for attention of men, attention of people. And I have seen them that they, you used to post your pictures mm -hmm. where you are naked, so you are looking for the attention. Mm -hmm. Attention for what? what? What attention were you looking for? Okay, the kind of attention I was looking for is because you see, nobody is loving you. Mm -hmm. Nobody is giving you that love, pure love. Mm -hmm. So when I'm looking for attention, I won't post my pictures on Instagram or Facebook. It's because I want that to be equipped with something. I not realizing people are lasting after me. Mm -hmm. So when they see my pictures, they will begin to praise me not realizing they're praising what is wicked inside me. It's not me that they are praising. So I was looking for that. That's good. That's good. So she was looking for attention. She was looking for a love, the love of the world. 
You see, she was looking to be loved by the world, to be comforted by the world. And that is why you are doing those. And then, and then you also said that she was achieving prosperity, prosperity, comfort, love, and status. Today, most people, they are going crazy where they are looking for status. They are striping where they are looking for status, likes, comment, followers. And they are going to hell. But now, God has transformed them. This one said because, for, uh, because of her career and how she was going, her lifestyle, that is what she was achieving. Prosperity, attention, and all those things. Now, the other, other question. Not other question, but I want to ask you now. What were you also achieving in your lifestyle? I know everybody, you have your own lifestyle. You, you had your own lifestyle different with her. Even career, even what you wanted, your, your vision, who you wanted to become. So what were you achieving? Or what did you, you want to achieve? What did you want to achieve? Well, when I was still in the world, mm. I, was in, world? I, was, I was just living my life. That's what I was doing. I had the spirit of rebellion. I was like, hmm? sp spirit of rebellion. rebellion. I didn't, I just didn't care. You can't tell me it's my body. I'm going to wear the way I want. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to achieve um, anything because I didn't go around, sleeping around. I only had one boyfriend. So with me, it was just, there's a saying, an American saying, because South Africa is mostly influenced by Western culture. So there's a saying that says YOLO. You only live once. So we were doing that. Live for today, like live like you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. So I just did that. I wanted to you achieve are, you are that. Enjoying yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm young. Mm -hmm. Come on, I gotta enjoy. I gotta, I gotta be out there. You know, expose myself that when I get old or I get married, I don't bother my husband and say, mm -hmm. Hey, husband, I wanna go to the club. Mm -hmm. Hey, husband, because in South Africa they have this belief that if you don't do something while you're still single, mm -hmm. then when you're married, you're gonna. You're gonna in your home. Yeah. So I was achieving my life. I was just you living my life. life. Yes. Amen. That's good. And then and you see the Bible says, you see, the Bible says that in the book of Ecclesiastes, that uh, young men, enjoy your life. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. But remember you shall give account of your life. You shall give you shall come to give account of how you spend your life. Amen. And now thank God because you will not answer that. Amen. How did you achieve in your lifestyle? What did you um, want? Okay, um, first of all, um, I, I lacked the, father, the, the fatherly love. Mm -hmm. So as much as I was being rebellious and I felt I hated men, uh, deep down, deep down, I, 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 was, I was longing for someone to embrace me and tell me it's okay. Like I, I really, I was like, oh, I, I pray that I get a good husband or a good boyfriend who doesn't you know, want to mess around. But then it didn't happen. So when it didn't happen, now, now this thing, this beast in me of the Jezebel spirit of wanting to, uh, because this, this man didn't give me the love and these men are, you know, the only thing they want to sleep with you and then shh, they just go. So I vowed, I'm going to dress in those heels, in those short dress and put on makeup. And the minute I hook them, mm. I'll miss you the way you missed me, or the way someone else missed me, or I'll make you pay for the sins of my father. Mm. I'll, I was seeking out for revenge. Mm -hmm. I wanted that. I wanted every man to cry. Mm. That, that that was my my agenda, and I felt good. I really felt awesome. Actually, I've seen several men cry because of me. They do. They don't look good by the way they really look bad but the fulfillment i had at that particular moment was wow i can step on these people who think at one they, they were given the mandate to rule the world at mm. they are the head we are the the neck mm. come on look at them look at them he's crying for me calling my name uh, i have won i felt powerful i felt no man Enjoys. can, no man can bongo me. No man can tunya me. No man can do anything. I felt yes, and actually, I used to intimidate them a lot. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Jezebel is also authoritative. I used yeah. to intimidate yeah. them a lot. Yeah, amen. And that answers the Bible in the book of Revelation, whereby the Bible says that that spirit of Jezebel will want to dominate and to control men. Yeah. 
to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to torture them. The Bible says that that Jezebel woman, she calls herself prophet, prophetess, but she will drink the blood of men mm-hmm. and servants of God. So she comes to kill, to destroy them, and to revenge. So that's the spirit that was working in you. So what you wanted, you wanted to torture them exactly. and to revenge mm-hmm. without nothing. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Another question. What is the benefit and the reason of how you are living, of the life that you are living? I can see in your pictures you are more than three queens. Yeah, more than three queens. And uh, now what, what was the reason behind the dressing, how you are dressing? And uh, I can see today now you are dressing like this. What was the reason? Yeah, what was the reason? Yes. Um... Uh, the reason of dressing wildly and like a harlot is to attract, mm-hmm. to please people. Mm-hmm. Personally, I, when you dress like that, even you can say trousers are comfortable. That's how we used to deceive ourselves. Trousers are comfortable. But when you look at trousers, they are revealing your body parts, the shape of your body. Mm-hmm. So you want, when you walk in, you, in a room, everybody to turn and just... Look at me, look at me, look at me. So you want that attention, you want to please people, you want people to love you. But you see, it's a, it's a kind of love that is not pure. It's a love because of things of the world. Mm-hmm. It's not love that is, uh, can give you joy and happiness. It's a love where people, they, you give people an opportunity to mess with your life, mm-hmm. to mess with your soul. And you gain nothing from it. There's nothing you can gain from living such kind of a life. Personally, I'm not, a, I'm not proud of who I was before Jesus Christ changed me. I'm not, I regret. But you see also God passed me through those, allowed me to go through that so that today I can have a testimony. I would not have this testimony if I didn't go through that. But because by the grace of God, he saved my life because he knew one day I will testify of his glory and his goodness upon my life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For her, she says that if I got, I got her, she said that she was, exp- uh, she was actually exposing herself. When she was wearing clothes, those uh, miniskirts, those tight clothes, she was actually doing those things to reveal her body parts. Yeah. To reveal her body part. She wanted to sell her body part. She was actually displaying what she has. You see? And that is the attention of the Sre Queen. Yeah. Sre Queen, the word Sre Queen. Sre Queen is a slaying queen. She kills them. She slay men. So she was slaying men with her clothes by revealing her body part. And that is seducing men with her body, with her clothes, how she was uh, uh, dressing. That is her. Let us hear from this one. What was the question? The question was, what, is the be- what was the benefit or reason for dressing, what, how you are dressing? Well, the benefit for me was also status. Mm-hmm. Like, wherever you walk, mm-hmm. people have to notice. Mm-hmm. You can't just walk. You know that day. If you walked in and nobody turned and looked, the air didn't change. Mm-hmm. I go back to your room and change. Uh-huh. You need to go back and represent. You must keep your status up there. Rather go high than go down. So for me, it was that, and I also used to be a poet. A poet. So if I go to this poetry thing, when I perform, ha, ah, people, they didn't even focus on my words. They were focusing on me. The whole room will focus on my body. And as, as a slay queen, mostly of the slay queens, they, they, they bleach. So you're already light in complexion like I am. But I want to go more. So the Jezebel spirit will bring in the bleaching creams. You want to bleach and, you know, the men will appreciate yellow bone, this and that. So you were, you were just status presenting. You knew very well I'm supposed to present my name, hold my name there. I should not fail my name. I should not fail my body. Just keep my status there. So I, I wanted to achieve that. Wow. That is pathetic and that is dangerous in the church. <laughs> that is very dangerous in the church. Because she say that she wanted uh, for her own status. That's why she, she was dressing like that. Because she wanted to post her status. Her, test, her status. And then he, she say that she was looking for attention. For attention. And then another thing, the focus. She was the focus now. Now, what if you are a man of God, you are a preacher, you are, you are preaching the gospel, and you have su- such ladies, such women who are looking for attention. 
Will they listen to you or they will, they will be, uh, they be uh, going to the attention of the woman? Will they focus your preaching or they will focus to the beauty of a woman and to how they were dressing? So those stray queen, those kind of dressing, they are terrible in the church. Amen. Because when they wear that, there is no focus. Yeah. There is no attention. People will lose their attention. They will lose the attention of the gospel. They will lose the attention of, uh, of the message. They will lose that attention and the focus of the gospel. Because you will become the, 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 the topic. You, you become the gospel. <laughs> you see, you became the gospel. <laughs> you yourself. Yeah. You became the message. You became the attention now. Because all eyes, they were looking at you. Yeah. And that is very dangerous in the church. Because mm -hmm. I have seen that even uh, they are at the street, when, uh, when, uh, when a stray queen will just pass away like that, mm -hmm. you feel even there is another atmosphere yeah. which has come. Mm -hmm. Because they are walking with a crowd of atmosphere, a crowd of rusting, a crowd of immorality, mm -hmm. and uh, you will feel that there is something that, uh, there is a creature that is passing. And all people will be, will be a fo so focused and they will be, uh, they, 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 he, he will steal their attention. Men will start looking at them. So that one, I understand that that one, there is a key behind that attention, that the devil is looking for attention, yeah. attention of, of, of men, attention of people and to distract them. And yes. And that's all? Oh, sorry. To mm -hmm. add on slaying the men mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. I slayed one man of God. Mm -hmm. I was walking in the mall. I mm -hmm. wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. He is a very well-known man of God in, in our country. Mm -hmm. And I walked in with my nakedness. He was so slayed. His mouth was dropping. He was ready to just devour me right there. But because I knew of the word that he says we must not make the, the people of God fall. So he said, you are cursed. And I said, no, 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 no. You're a man of God. You're going to bring, bring me a curse. No, I'm going my way. I don't care about your money. So I'm saying it, it does happen. We, they, we did. We slayed people of God. Wow. Wow. Now you can hear. That is terrible. Oh, and let me, let, let me uh, empower your, your testimony oh, with this word. In the book of Matthew 5, verses uh, starting 27, the Bible says, you have heard that it was said, those of old, you shall not commit adultery. 28. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to rust for her has already committed adultery with her and at his heart. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That you see the Bible say that do not commit adultery. And he say that whoever looks at a woman to rust at her, to sleep with her, has already committed adultery in heart. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now you see that all men that look at you, they rusted at you yeah. and you committed adultery with them. Mm -hmm. And you, you shall come to be, to be judged in the day of judgment if you, if you, you, you did not repent. You see, that's, that means that when you are dressing like that, you, you need to be aware that you are, you are fornicating with the men. Amen. You are putting them into temptation. Amen. And there are people who are taking even your image, as you, you are saying, and they were masturbate, masturbating with your image. Yeah. So it is terrible, it is defying men, and is also uh, ten, tempting men, and also promoting adultery. Adultery is not when they go to bed, but adultery is when you take him or her spiritually to bed. You rust at her or you rust at him. That is spiritual adultery. Mm -hmm. And that one is even evil than the, the, the physical one. Mm -hmm. Because you can, you can stop the physical one, mm. but the, 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 the spiritual one, it is very hard. Amen. Amen. So what also motivated you? Praise God. Um, <clears throat> what motivated me to dress in that way? One, I was addicted uh, to fashion. Mm. Um, you were addicted? To fashion. To fashion. To fashion. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, I would not copy like everything I see in the TV or in the magazines because personally I was like uh, designing clothes. So um, I felt there was this thing in me like I have to look good at all the time. Even going to the shop, I had to make sure I'm, you know, top notch. I'm like representing myself very well. And every time I'll put on all these dresses and heels and everything, I felt as if I am teaching, like I'm trying to show you, 
um, you know, what you're putting on is not decent, you know, your color blocking is a mess and everything. I'll try to, re I'll try to remove mistakes from how you dress. Or even if you are even scantily dressed, I would try to, you know, correct a few things here and there. Because I felt this urge in me, like, um, to, because even I, actually, even I attended the tailoring, which I didn't, I attended like two, three months. After every lecture, I would rush to go and be taught so that I can also start drafting my own, mm -hmm. um, you know. I wanted to really start my own cloth line. So you find there was that spirit. And most actually, uh, uh, recently I, s I f came across that book where I was drafting those clothes. And trust you me, it, as much as they were long, the upper part was revealing. <laughs> revealing. So practically there was nothing. I was not representing Christ in mm. that field as, as per se. Yes. So in other words, she was doing it for the world. Mm -hmm. It is wildness. Mm -hmm. Because fashion is wildness. Mm -hmm. And what motivated her was it is fashion. And the Bible tells us that don't you know, in the book of James 4, 4, that don't you know, to be afraid with the world is to be an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. So whoever who wants to become a friend of the world, he becomes an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. So when you are a in fashion, in world, you become an enemy of God. And the Bible says that do not love the world or the things that are in the world. So you women who love the world, you love the fashion, every fashion that comes, you love the fashion, you have to be hard. Those styles, that is worldliness. And worldliness is a sin because the Bible says that do not love the world, the fashions of the world, the patterns of the world. And uh, many people are really lost because of fashion. Even the church today is lost because of fashion. Okay. They are embracing everything that is coming and they say, ah, that is fashion. And you heard that in your testimony, I don't know if it's you. She say that one day, one time she went with a fashion of Rihanna in the church, okay. looking like a demon. But, all, but, but she was recommended that she, she is smart. Yeah, you look smart. You see, preachers, they are recommending them, look smart. That is wildliness. That is fashion. The church is embracing wildliness. And wildliness is sin. Wildliness is satanic. Mm. They are embracing satanic wildliness in the church. And that is a demonic spirit. That is what is destroying the church. Because the, the church is like they are competing mm. with the world. So fashion and, uh, uh, and wildliness is sin. And we should be careful of fashions. Mm. Another question is this. How did you seduce men? You see... I am speaking so much about men because I'm a man, and I'm a man, a man of God, and I want to know the secret to slay this is Jezebel, <laughs> to slay this Jezebel, and to get her out of the church. If she don't repent, get out. She would slay men and women again. So uh, what is the secret? How did you seduce men? Because I heard that he, even you, say, uh, the, you, you slayed a, a man, a, man, a servant of God, by looking at you. She was left like a, a you see, Mouse like a zombie, <laughs> like a zombie. She, she killed them. And the church has been killed by Jezebel. Amen. This woman who is called Jezebel, she's, she's also the one that was called the leader. Mm. And she slayed Samson. Amen. So no matter your anointing, no matter your strength like Samson, be careful of Jezebel. Amen. She, will cray, she will slay you. Amen. So what, how are you seducing men? How? Uh, personally, my personally, I just wanted to wear perversing clothes, mm -hmm. like show my cleavage, uh, tighter shorts, have my my bad cheeks out. Mm. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is bam, that? Bam. Wow. The bum bum was outside the buttocks. The lower, <laughs> okay. the lower. Oh my Jesus, praise Jesus. Buttocks. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. showing the lower flesh, oh, flesh. showing when you're moving, it's just it's moving flesh. like this, Dancing. wobbly. Mm -hmm. So that's how I used. And my intention is not to sleep with man. Mm -hmm. I just want you to notice me. Mm -hmm. Then when yeah, just notice me. I'm here. So. Um, not knowing that, that's a sin also. Because, yeah, sin. yeah, I didn't know then, but I thank Jesus for changing my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that one should be taken so serious by the church. Because, you see, she say that she, the way she was seducing men, or the way she was uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, looking for attention of men is that she was uh, she was exposing her cleavage, mm. exposing her buttocks, exposing her shape, and that is dangerous because you know the the, the weakness of a man. It is in the weakness of a woman. So if the woman will stripe, that is a weakness of the man. So showing the cleavage, showing the buttocks, showing uh, the body parts, uh, showing the open open part of the body, that is seducing men. And you should know, Christians, that when you wear such clothes, be careful because you might come to, be, to give account. Because those men who see that, they, they somehow, they lust at you and you defile them. Amen? Amen? So you are doing that, uh, you, are, uh, you are exposing your privilege. Yeah. Another one. Well, I had a saying that you make the men want and the woman hates so my motto was when i go into town you're walking together as a couple the men will want and the woman will hate so the more the woman hates the more my status is going up so for me it was all just for representing and yeah they'll go you know you show your butt cheeks and you get used to it the first time you you like when the the spirit is is whispering in, in your ear you have to wear this now you have to you try it out at home first for me because you have to look at your community if i go out like this what are, gonna, are they gonna say so you try it inside your house until you're really confident now i'm gonna walk like this sometimes you walk, you wear something so defiling that you have to to take um you have to drink to get the strength, the, the bravery to walk around because you know I am really naked right now. So mm -hmm. let me take some liquor so I can get out there and, and slay some more and slay them. That, that was the... That was the wow. Mm. That is also dangerous because you say that uh, you made... You, you, uh, uh, you used to dress like that because you wanted the men to want. Mm -hmm. To want. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want but you don't give them. Mm -hmm. So you so so you just kill them you and you just torture dusty. them with the feeling yes. Yes. and uh, spiritually you are you are just torturing them but yeah. you are not giving what they yeah. want yeah. you see and uh, that is true because there are people who dress not because they want them to mm -hmm. to sleep with them but they want uh, like uh, like I don't know how we can use it it's like they want uh, they want to 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 steal them their mind mm. to steal their mind. Uh, good. They want to provoke you. You are provoking them to jealousy, mm. provoking them to jealousy yeah. through how you are dressing, jealousy of lust. Mm. And you see, she say that she wanted men to want more, and uh, and they are women to hate her. Mm. So that is a spirit that was operating in you, mm. the spirit that is operating even in the church, mm. the spirit that causes divorce, that causes uh, 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 that attacks the marriage. Mm. That, uh, that, uh, that, that, that attacks the marriage that now women, they, 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 are, they are being considered less by their men because of how you dress. Mm -hmm. They are men, they are looking after you. Mm -hmm. So that is a spirit mm -hmm. which is destroying even married men mm -hmm. and destroying them and provoking them to jealousy, mm -hmm. to sleep with those women. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> personally, I was not so... Um, so revealing with my 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 body especially the upper area uh, it's something that i it, i wasn't comfortable from day one since long time ago but i used to make sure i work with my legs from just slightly above the knee that's where my clothes will reach not so you know so short but slightly above the knee because I, I knew, you know, like, you know, there are people, people have different shapes of legs. Mm -hmm. Personally, I have those, what you call broad legs, like fleshy leg, you know, mm -hmm. fleshy leg. So I knew, I, I, and I don't know why I picked that up, but it was working for me, apparently. I knew just a portion of my thighs going downwards was working for me. And then even I went a step ahead or even tattooing my leg, just to give it a little bit of... Um, mm -hmm of you know a sugar coating and everything so i went ahead and even tattooed my leg mm. so i knew personally i was not so emphasizing on my dress code mm -hmm. but I, I i had this thing of um um of how can i put it i don't want to say it's a discernment because you are in sin uh, this psychology thing 
I, I would look at a man like this and apparently I would just know Apostle Simon has a weakness of A, B, C, D. He's, he's mm. just, you know, a sweet guy who when I pull this string, he'll dance to my tune. Mm -hmm. So that was the main thing I, I, I emphasized on and that's why heels were, they were, it was a must thing in my closet. In my closet. Mm. So I, I emphasized on part of my thighs downwards and um, the, you know, the, the makeup and everything and perfume. Perfume was a main ingredient for me. I, I never used to like this. Sorry, sorry to say this ch perfumes you can locally find in any supermarket. Mm -hmm. I would do everything to get a designer perfume. Mm -hmm. a and funny enough, it it really had an effect on men. Mm -hmm. It really had an effect on men, and I was really drawn to two specific brands, which was Davidoff and. Um, um, Davidoff and this Le um, Davidoff, to be precise, leather blend and Terry Hermes, which apparently the Hermes, Hermes is a god, is an ancient god. Mm -hmm. I came to realize that later. And um, there was another one, it is really <laughs> getting out, Hugo Boss. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 my, my, my main agenda was to know your weakness as a man. I'll make sure you dance to my tune and I'll make sure you are submitted mm -hmm. to me. You cannot cough. I, and I was actually so angelic. So I was like so submissive and everything. But I knew what I was after. I wanted to put you there beneath. I wanted you to dance to my tune. I will not come aggressively. I was using my brains very well to make sure I've captured you oh, she's an humble lady, she's this, she's so jovial and that. But I knew what I wanted from a man. Exactly. So you say that you are, for you, you are exposing your leg, uh, the lower part of your leg. And that is a problem also that uh, today women, they are, they are, there is like they are, they are, there is a disease whereby they all, they want to expose their leg. They don't want to dress clothes like this. They say, oh, when you wear that, it's like, you look like mom. Yeah. And they are also mom. Mm. And uh, they are also candidate to be called mom. Yes. So they are exposing their leg. But the way she was exposing the, her leg, there was a meaning in that. Because she was also seducing men through her leg. Mm -hmm. So when you expose your leg, you are exposing. And uh, you are uh, attracting men and seducing them. Then she also said about tattoo. That even when she was doing tattoo, she was just doing tattoo in order that in the, in the, the part that has tattoo, she would expose that part. And that is how we see. They even do tattoo here. And when she do that tattoo, she draw tattoo, she will expose that place. If it is a, 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 a breast, she will expose her breast because of that tattoo. So she's, she's just doing it to expose. She's just looking away to expose her body. You see? And that is terrible because when you expose your body, you are exposing uh, whom you are. Mm -hmm. Not only to them, but whom you are. Mm -hmm. That is your character. Because the Bible says that by your fruits, you will know them. You shall know them by the fruit, by the appearance. You shall know them. Because why, what why you are doing, you, you are doing because of the spirit that was in you. Mm -hmm. Everything that you are doing, there was a spirit that was ministering in you. And a sign in your, po in your part. Because I see that you all, you have three, three different testimony. Mm -hmm. But everyone, there was a spirit that was ministering. Mm -hmm. This one is different from this one. Mm -hmm. And all of them, they are ministering to destroy the church of Christ. And to bring, and to defile the world. Mm -hmm. To be defile a uh, pure mind, pure thought. To defile everything. To bring abomination. Now, another question is this. Is this what growth attracted men? What clothes were attracting men? Trousers, uh, short skirts. Trousers. Yeah, mm -hmm. trousers. But no, not just trousers. Like a uh, material one. Mm -hmm. We have the skinny the straight, one. the skinny ones that mm -hmm. they stretch. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when it stretches, it just mm -hmm. takes the form mm -hmm. of your body. Mm -hmm. Everything is being revealed. Whether you have a six pack. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> whether, <laughs> whether you have um, nice butt cheeks mm -hmm. and the upper part, mm -hmm. the front part, mostly mm -hmm. of your body. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Shorts? Shorts. Uh, yeah, shorts. Okay. Mm, high heels. Mm -hmm. 
men love high heels. Mm. High heels. Worldly Boy men, high not heels. godly men. Yeah. Why high heels? When you wear high, when you wear high heels, the higher the better. Mm -hmm. The your body posture changes. Then your butt is like lifted up, so it goes like this. So when you when when you're walking, you can fail to notice. Mm -hmm see that person and that one thing amazed me is like all the time when a man a man greets you you just turn around and see what you got behind there mm -hmm. so m their focus is turned to that mm -hmm. the other thing is uh makeup mm -hmm. uh makeup when you get your makeup right uh no man can resist you worldly main i'm not gonna say godly main but also also this can also affect if you're not spiritually strong, strong. Mm -hmm. if you're not spiritually strong, you can't resist that mm -hmm. because that what you're looking, you, you remember, there's a scripture that says what something about the eyes mm -hmm. that doors for your soul. Mm -hmm. So if your eyes are in darkness, then the entire body is in yes. darkness. So if may, a man looks at how beautiful you are, mm -hmm. by the time he looks at your face, he looks at your body shapes mm -hmm. and he's gone. And the other thing is, like she said, perfume, I also like perfume. Mm -hmm. I burnt all my perfume. I think I have a testimony also to follow up on that. Mm -hmm. um, perfumes, I used to do Versace, Roberto Cavalli, uh, all these perfumes, nice ones. So one thing that made me realize perfume as an impact is one day I went on a date and for dinner. So that car that, that took me on a date, he came back and he asked, what perfume is that? Mm -hmm. got, got him that effect. Mm -hmm. He followed me up. Mm -hmm. What perfume is that? Mm -hmm. So you see, it has that effect. Maybe because of what is inside the perfume. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing for me that worked was nails. Yes. I used to do n long nails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you do artificial nails and you paint them, then you're going to be talking and you're doing your nails like this you have to notice because some men what they like oh dear thank you jesus mm -hmm. some men they like it when they are caressed with nails yeah. so they find that yeah tinkling and then it gives them that sensation so that's that's it for me okay i did not know <laughs> about nails now i know why they are wearing uh, long nails but the, what shocks me is that the, in the scripture, in the book of Isaiah, that says that uh, in that highway of holiness, no, uh, no, 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 no abomination will walk in that way. No foolish people will walk in that way. And it says that no, nothing that devour shall walk in that way. You see, an animal devours with the, with the, with, the, with, the, with, with, with the clothes. Yeah. But now, so you find that uh, how they are wearing uh, those nails, it's like they are becoming animal mm -hmm. for devouring, yeah. devouring men. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, they look like creatures <laughs> to devour men. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, are, they, they are just uh, displaying the spirit that inside them. Mm -hmm. The devil inside them mm -hmm. is just like that with the nails for devouring men. That when they touch men like that, they touch them and they devour their soul. Another thing is about perfume. Perfume also is, uh, many of satanic uh, uses perfume. Mm. And the perfume do have the spirit of rust. Mm. The spirit of seducing, seducing. That there are certain perfume that when you hear them, a certain perfume uh, for, for prostitutes. Mm. Even there at prostitute corner, there's certain perfume that, uh, that, 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 that smells there. And when men will hear, will feel that perfume, will smell that perfume, they'll be attracted to sleep with them. Mm -hmm. So there are many satanic pa uh, perfume that are uh, that are, ma are made from the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. to seduce men. Even their name, some of them they are called last. Mm -hmm. Sa demon, seduction. Mm -hmm. Some of them. My demon, my love. Here, my demon, my love. Alien. Perfume. Other alien. Mm -hmm. So those perfume they are evil. And also note that note that they also attract the presence of demon. Yeah. They attract the presence of demon. They are like fragrance. Mm -hmm. 
you hear that people who do occultism, they have some frag race, frag, frag glass, which they, 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 they burn, or like woody. Udi. Why? Because they are inviting some spirit. Yeah. There are some spirit which are invited through perfume. So when the, you put that perfume, you invite those spirit of seducing, lust, and of slaying men, mm -hmm. and of sexual sin. Mm -hmm. So perfume are not good. And uh, so as a Christian, how can we do? Mm -hmm. We just avoid them. Mm -hmm. We just avoid them and be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, the Bible says that we have the fragrance of holiness. Mm -hmm. That is our perfume. Our perfume is holiness. So if you are holy, you should produce a flank glass of holiness. Amen. 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 And if you are sticking, go and take a bath. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Don't try to, 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 to smear yourself. To, ah. No, no, no. God will help you. Amen. Yeah. Who else? Where were we? Where were we? <coughs> well, for me, it was, um, it got shorter and shorter. I just mm -hmm. couldn't wait to get shorter because mm -hmm. I'd wear, mm -hmm. I'd walk around with a bra only mm -hmm. just wearing a bra and then mm -hmm. put something on here and open here just cover my back but just like a, there's those bras created they just it's a bra and then there's a cloth that just gets yeah it's still mm -hmm. a bra it's lingerie so i wear that and just everything i didn't have any normal clothes because i remember when i got my first job mm -hmm. i didn't have clothes to wear because everything was cut i'd buy a normal jean i'd cut i just t-shirt long thing just cutting Cut. just it had to be yes. it had to show some skin mm -hmm. it had to show some skin because i remember i had a dress and this dress i started cutting at the back it wasn't enough it was longer i, I cut it here and i cut at the back it wasn't enough i had to cut here like a heart showing my breast mm -hmm. like this so here i cut here I cut everything cut 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 it was just for me, yeah, it was the clothes, the dresses, for the dresses, the short dresses, when you walk, you have to pull them down. You know, when you're walking with your heels, you're like going this side and you're pulling, mm -hmm. you're doing this, you do your, your, you, of course, you're going to move like a snake and, and men are going to notice. And you have the longest legs ever. They become so long because your heels are very, are very long. You're deceiving men. They'll be like, you have the longest legs ever the sexiest legs because they say men love long legs so you know you even create a step like you open up like a bracket like it open up from your thighs and go like this mm -hmm. and then you walk mm -hmm. and you know how to walk you're walking like like there's judges judging you taking notes like am i am i gonna get a 10 out of 10 right now <laughs> what am i doing you know you ah it was very evil that spirit thank god i'm delivered Praise Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So she say about the, her leg, she exposed everything, every put of the body and every clothes that she, she had, she would cut so that she may reveal her body part. Mm -hmm. So I understand that the spirit that was working in you, mm -hmm. the spirit of nakedness, mm -hmm. the spirit of nakedness, mm -hmm. that you are not happy when you are covering your body. You, you, just, you, are, you, you are happy when you are revealing your body. Mm -hmm. And that is how you did it. Oh, what about you? You, or you say um, as I said before I was not so much into nakedness mm -hmm. but I, I remember I specialized in like uh, this the, the the clothes or rather the skirts and dresses which are just slightly above the, the knee mm -hmm. so exposing a little bit of my thighs and the legs now something else I came to realize um, I will I also loved long dresses but they are long dresses which reveal the body mm. they call them ma they call them maxi maxi dresses so i would get maxi dresses which you know make sure that it emphasizes or the movement of your behind mm -hmm. is really really evident so i would really emphasize on that mm -hmm. if it's a long dress the behind has to be you know when, when i'm walking and actually i'm not even in heels and i'm in f in low shoes the, the behind is wobbling and wobbling. Yeah, it's wobbling. And by then, I remember I was really, I was really big, actually. I was really big. So I, 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 I would work if it's a long dress, then the behind has to speak for me. Yeah. If it's a short dress, my thighs, my legs have to speak for me. Mm. And then not forgetting the makeup and the hair attachments. Mm. The makeup, the hair attachments. Uh, and I came to realize later on, as much as I wasn't, so naked there was this deceiving spirit i had whereby i tried to present myself as this 
civilized lady as this lady who is not naked as this lady who has a little bit of morals to hook sorry to say the word i, I felt to hook these stupid men mm. you know because i knew at the end of the day not every man wants a naked lady mm. so i those were my targets those were my targets so i would make sure i was a little bit presentable to present that false image so that i can strike Jesus. thank you jesus <laughs> thank you jesus that god saved you because you, you you can crush the church Amen. <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the living god yeah. and uh, so the bible says also in the book of proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 to support that that and there a woman met him with attire of a harot and a crafty heart. Mm. When I, I'm listening to your testimony, I see that you all have a crafty heart. Mm. A heart that is after something. Mm. A heart that is after something. You are creating. There's something that you are creating. It's like art craft. Mm. There's something that you are drawing. Yeah. So your heart is like you are, you are drawing something to men. You have a plan to for men. A trap for men. And then you say, and there a woman met her, met him with attire of a harrot. Meaning they are, they are attire of harrot, a dressing of harrots. Mm. And those dressing that you see, how they were dressing, those are dressing of a harrot. And you, they, are, they were also Christians and they were dressing like that. So, another question is this. Uh, how expensive was your life? How expensive your, of, was your life? Because I know uh to to maintain uh to maintain three queen to maintain a life of three queen because we heard that they were she was looking for prosperity for money so she could not even date with men who do not have money so she, for her to, uh, to 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 display herself she must use money how expensive was your was your life hmm? personally how how expensive was my life? Um, wow. <laughs> Just imagine maintaining a status of going on a holiday every once a month in Dubai. Uh, shopping in Dubai. Were you in Dubai? No, I used to go on vacations. You used to go vacation? Yeah. Alone? No. With men? <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, the, the thing is, the thing is, I used to work uh, with a company. Mm -hmm. I was a journalist. Mm -hmm. But when we go to trade fairs. You are a journalist. Yeah, um, ex journalist. Ex journalist. Yeah, okay. no media anymore. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working with a company, so uh, I used to go to trade fairs. When I go to trade fairs, I put my status, so you love someone at the background. Mm -hmm. And I had made friends, I had a company of uh, Kenyan friends, we meet on holidays, but it's not about sex, it's about us having fun and make getting men thirsty, it's not we're interested in sex. So I had friends, a team of friends that we used to go on parties with, personally in my case. Um, I used to have two, it was really expensive because I worked day and night because I had two jobs. I'm a journalist and I'm in real estate. And also, because I can't date a broke man. And I know, I don't want to have sex with men. Just I just don't want to be used by men that much because no man can give you something without expecting something in return. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give my body a house because sex to me was disgusting. So, uh, because you see, it's disgusting to me because you're bound by spirit of masturbation. So I wasn't interested in that sex per se. Sleeping with man to me could be now. It's not easy. You satisfied yeah, yourself. satisfied you myself. You get sex toys and stuff like that. Okay. So um, I wasn't interested in much, but I used to work a lot. I was smart. I was brilliant. I graduated even with a distinction mm. in uh, campus. So to me, I was good in making money. And you see my character that I'm portraying when I, s I, can, I can go from naked to classy. Mm. I can go to naked to, you find me in a VIP room with high rank men. So what you give me on the table is, I'll, I'll, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give you exactly what you want, even better than what you put on the table. So for me, I do that. I get my money. I go on holiday. You see, I didn't want broke men. Mm -hmm. 
That was my mentality. No broke men should come on my way. Mm. If I'm making more money than you, we're going to not work together. Because mm. I want someone who can give me a check. Mm. Yeah, that was wow. my life. And nothing I gained from it. It's, it's just a waste of life. It's just and a waste of money and money and resources. At least there's someone who is going hungry at the streets. You can give. You can give to the poor. You're so full of yourself, self-centeredness. It's all about me. And when I'm, you're living that life, you even forget about your family. My family could see me mm -hmm. like once a year or twice a year. I'm investing in things that they do not work. I'm investing in me. It's all about me. It's not about you. So now I know it's about others. It's not about me. Mm. Salvation is not about me. It's about mm. others. Mm. So I'm, it's for me to serve Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus that I, I want. Amen. As for me, now in my body and my job and my hands, we will serve Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So she said that she was, she was actually very expensive. Mm. But for her, she was working. Mm. So she had money. That's why she had money. And now about that is that she was investing in herself through the money that you had. Mm. And uh, maybe let me ask, how, 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 what the, is the cost of the hair that you are using? Because I, I saw you in that clip, you sent me that clip that you are burning, all the makeups and all things. Would you say the cost of what you are doing? Because I see that they were expensive. You used to go to, to Dubai and you had those ornaments. Yeah. Mm. Um, I used to wear human hair. Human hair is quite expensive. Uh, I used not to buy it locally. I used to buy from the malls in Dubai and some places and connections. Mm -hmm. uh, but what amazed me one day I went shopping and I had one long hair um, below my butt cheeks. And when I was coming through the escalators, I found Indian ladies. Mm -hmm. They were somewhere of uh, just below, they could see from the ground, mm -hmm. and I was coming through the escalators, and then they all turned, and they looked at me. Mm -hmm. So when they looked at me, I felt like, what did they look at me like that? Mm -hmm. Then when I went further, there was uh, a friend I knew, I asked him, why did all those Indian ladies turn and look at me? Because they look at that like you are an outcast. They, look at, they looked at me like, you like you have something that is disgusting or something that's uh, I didn't understand but when I came to Christ Lord there by the power of the Holy Spirit he revealed to me that exactly about the human hair when he was taking me through separation from human hair mm -hmm. he revealed to me that day when those women were looking at me they were looking at the hair that they sacrificed to their gods that was on my head that was by the Holy Spirit he revealed to me when I got born again mm -hmm. Because he wanted me to detach from all those artificial hair, and that's 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 the truth. Wow, mm. how expensive was your life? Um, well, for me, because I just got out of high school, mm -hmm. I nobody at home was working. It wasn't that expensive. I, I couldn't keep up with the slay queen mm -hmm. status of Facebook and Instagram, but I had this gift of of tailoring mm -hmm. so everything I could find no matter how cheap it was I'd make it I'd turn it into a, a star dress or a star fashion everything I'd, I'd even buy used shoes and then I'd come and, and redecorate it or anything and then turn everything I into dollar worth so compared to now it was expensive mm -hmm. but compared to the other slay queen former slay queens it was not that expensive and what i did there's a question you asked that i just remembered something to tell to to the girls out there who because i was a virgin so to the girls out there who are virgins and they think ah oh, but i'm not because i had that notion in my mind i'm not i'm a virgin i'm not sleeping with anybody so i can just show my body any way i like so it doesn't work like that because I used to con men using virginity. I'd be like, you're in a club and they're like, oh, but I'm a virgin. I just came here to enjoy. And they'd want more. They'd spend more money because they want to get this virginity. So I'd go around having free things, free this, free that. They'd give me money, put money on the bank because I'm a virgin. They want to get that virgin because they've seen what I'm presenting to them. So everybody wants to be the first. So I'm saying to all the girls out there, it doesn't matter if you're a virgin, 
to Christ you have to be holy inside and out. Amen. That's true. You see, we are not entering heaven mm. by the virginity yeah. of the flesh. Mm. We are entering heaven by the virginity of the spirit. Mm. Spiritual holiness. Mm. The spiritual holiness and that virginity, that is what God is expecting us. So saying you are a virgin, you don't sin, so you have never... That won't guarantee you to enter heaven. What will guarantee you is to repent and to live a holy life, yeah. in and out. Mm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> mine um, was and was not expensive. Mm. Why am I saying that? Um, um, I had this, uh, I don't know if I should call it a weakness. I was earning by then. So there are some men I would befriend. I, di I didn't have an agenda towards them. So I would actually spend on them. I would spend on them. But then again, I would make sure this money comes back. This money that I'm spending on this so-and-so mm -hmm. has to come back. So my baits, my, 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 the people I was targeting, um, I would make sure actually before, because I, as I said, psychologically I would use them. Mm -hmm. I would be this lady who is not after money. Yes, I wasn't after money or that. There was that thing that I wanted to get sar satisfied with, but then it wasn't there. But then again, there was anger whereby I wanted to make men, you know, suffer. So I would get my man, that, that's my potential man. Th there are this, as she said, when, when you're in that kind of life, you don't tolerate. As in any man who wants to use you, you can't tolerate a man who is broke literally speaking. So there are men, high-end men I would target. If you come to, I never used to, uh, I never used to approach any man, mm. but I'll make sure psychologically I mess you up. I will not even use my mouth to say anything, but my action, I'll make sure I will snare you. Mm. So because when I look at you, I know, actually, actually my friends used to ask, how did you know so and so had this kind of weakness or had this kind of character? And I'm like, I don't know. I just looked at him and I saw he's, he's you know, he's a soft man. It's, he's, 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 he's naive, he's this and that. And there's some men I would look at and I know this is a sharp one, so I have to up my game. So those men I targeted, as much as I was earning, there are men, if you're not driving anything, above a Prado, uh, sorry to say, I, 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 I don't want to look at you, or rather I have nothing to do. I'll keep you as a friend, but I'll put the boundary whereby you, you know definitely you can't cross. Mm -hmm. So even these men, during the first few dates that we know, you get to know each other, I'll make sure actually not a coin comes from their pocket. Mm. I'll fit the bull, I'll, fi I'll foot the bill, I will pay for my own cab, I would actually do stuff on my own. Even if we pass by by a supermarket or a chemist, I'll make sure I remove my, my ATM card or my money before he does. Mm. So because I know at the end of the day, this man, when he goes back at home, he'll be like, ah, I've never met such kind of a lady. Mm. All the, the women I meet, they, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. So I know I would have, have already given a message. Mm. And I'm like, why are you doing this? I'm like, I'm used to being independent. Mm. So they'll be like, huh, this is what I'm looking for. And before you know it, you will be spending money, you'll be chopping your money on me. Before you, before you realize it, <sighs> I remember there was a certain case um, whereby um, he just randomly called. And uh, sorry to say I was, you know, I was still a mother, a mother to one. So when he said, where are you? I'm like, I I'm, I'm just checking out some clothes. Um, so I take a picture, I took pictures and he's like, okay, because I knew he was a very smart man. To look where we were like this, to, any, our psychology or our, our intelligence was at par. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was dealing with someone, either we are on the same level or higher. Mm -hmm. So this guy, I sent pictures and he's like, take the five pieces, each piece was two five. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Angie went removed the money from the ATM, and I bought. Because I knew what I wa I knew. I had already seen what he wanted. So I knew this money has to come back to me in one way or another. Went, bought my pieces of clothes. The next day is like, uh, the, among the, the several pics you sent me, I want you to put on this. So he put. And when the day we went and met, the first thing he did, he spent three times the amount of 
you know the the amount of money I spend on the dresses and extra. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had already foreseen what will happen. Mm -hmm. So my my targets were I would uh, as I said I had this character of portraying a very ma uh, mature lady, a very lady who is not materialistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never like really felt I was materialistic, but I, you know, seen camouflages, mm -hmm. but I knew I had a crafty spirit. I knew I had, I, I knew how to, you know, tell what sort of a man is, what sort of a lady she is, to keep her from that. This one is gonna cross me, I'm going to I'm going to become like a demon. This man is a very is you know, is a walk over, is a piece of cake. This one is a hard one. You know, I, I could tell different and when I see this one is going to waste my time, regardless of how loaded you are, I have nothing to do with you because I know I, I it took me like a day or two to get what I want. Mm -hmm. So I will use the intelligence I had mm -hmm. and the weakness I knew what meant. Because if God, you have the spirit of Jezebel in you of being authoritative, it's like he gives you that, you know, wisdom, evil wisdom to, 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 to know your prey. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. She said that she's, she used the weakness of men. Mm -hmm. So if you are weak somewhere, she will use that. Mm -hmm. She was using the weakness of a man. And that is how she was using uh, to stray them mm -hmm. and even to kill them spiritually. Another thing that I, will, I, I would want to, to ask is this. Because when you are doing those things, you are doing where you are still Christian. Mm -hmm. How did you thought that God uh, was seeing you? How, how did you thought that God was seeing you? When you are doing those things and you are, you are a Christian, how did you take a God? Christianity to me at that time was a joke. Because mm. I was surrounded by people calling themselves Christians. Christians. Uh -huh. We're in the club together. Mm -hmm. uh, they're hypocrites. They're having sex before marriage. Mm. There's no Christ in them manifesting. They do not have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So Christianity at that a time joke. to me was a joke. A joke. You could not tell me nothing about Jesus. In fact, I didn't know, like, I didn't believe. I believe I knew there was God, but as much as I believed, I didn't care. I just just brushed it off. But now, because of Christ, I am free. Amen. And also, the, whom the Son of God sets free is free indeed. Amen. So I'm free in Jesus' name. Oh, do you know Christianity is not a joke? <laughs> because Christianity is not a religion. Mm. Christianity is not just a brand, just a name. You're calling yourself a Christian. Yeah. Christianity is a relationship. Mm. You must have a relationship with the Son of God through Amen. the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, mm. you are not a Christian. Romans 8, 9 says that from... Romans 8, 9 says, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, I do not know you. Yeah. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit to re reveal Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to you. You may say you are a Christian, but mm -hmm. fail to have a relationship. It's not about religion. It's mm -hmm. a relationship. Father, daughter relationship. Father, son relationship. How are we talking like this? You must get to a point. This is how we talk to God. Mm -hmm. Get to know God. Take your burden to God. If you're feeling lonely, go to God. If you feel you need comfort, the comforter if you're going through stuff uh depression and don't look into men mm. go to jesus he's the solution of what you're going through no man man can do nothing to you but with christ everything is possible Hallelujah. yeah amen amen so you thought christianity was a joke that yeah. is what he said that she was when she was in the world she was doing sin was committing sin and dressing that like the world they but she was still as christian because the company that she was with, the bad company, they were the bad company of Christian. Yeah. And so she thought they it is just a joke. And they said they were born again. So that means that the church of Christ should, be, should have an example. Mm -hmm. Should have an example and should be an, a good example to the world. Because many people who call themselves Christian, they are stumbling broke for her. Mm -hmm. She was stumbling. She was going astray because of people who claim they were Christian. So our 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 our, our parents like Christian, our actual like Christian should draw people to Jesus, not drawing people to sexual sin and to drinks, truly drinking. Okay, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that is good. Well, most of my nakedness, uh, I was still in the world. Mm -hmm. When I turned to Jesus, mm -hmm. I tried to minimize. Mm -hmm. Let me minimize. Yes, mm -hmm. with the skirts that we here. 
mm-hmm. show your knee and and yeah because in, in the churches that side you it's okay for you to to wear like this mm-hmm. actually they wear skirts like this even the pastor's wives and everything mm-hmm. they sit because uh, you sit on the top on, on the altar then they have um head wraps to put like this for when they're sitting down because the skirt will come back like that so so they're saying it's okay to wear like this just if you have something to cover for the people sitting down not to not to see this but when you're standing up it's okay so i tried minimizing also i'd wear my head wrap when i was going in church but under i'd have every type of artificial hair i could i could get my hands on I tried to, I went from pink and red hair to, to black hair. They have this thing that for Christians, there's, there's colors God allows, artificial colors. So if you're wearing black artificial hair, it's okay. God, God's allowed, God allows it. And, and, and heels, you know, if you're not wearing heels, you're not, you're not smart. You look dumb. You look like you're not, old yes, old fashioned, like something is not right. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd minimize the Jesus Bell spirit was still with me, but now he, she was undercover, like, oh, you're a Christian and all that. But she was following me because when I walked around, I'll still be, be the same old me, and men will still be following me. And uh, uh, hard to say, but it was true, I fell. I fell back into fornication because I'm still walking with this Jezebel. And to the people who, who are listening, you don't you don't wear holy because you say it's holy it has to come from conviction because you can wear like this but inside you're still lasting for the things you 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 left in the world because i wore like this but i was still in fornication because it didn't come from realizing that it's wrong it came because somebody told me if you're a christian you have to wear like this so holiness is inside out Amen. amen And that one I can see with the, with the Bible, the word of God that says that uh, out of heart come out all evil thoughts, mm-hmm. uh, thoughts of murder, killing, lust, lying, envy, all those evil and adultery, out of heart. There are people who use that parable and they say that God look at heart. There are people who are sinning, they are dressing like Jezebel, like Harold, saying God look at heart. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says out of heart come out all those Im- evil thoughts. So if you are dressing like that, that is what is coming in your heart. Mm. If you are dressing naked, that means your heart is naked. You see, out of heart come out every evil thought. Mm. If you are dressing nakedness, that means in your heart there's nakedness. Mm. There is lust, there is a de- seducing, mm. there's prostitution. So by your, how you are revealing yourself, it is peak of what you have in your heart. Mm. And so the Bible says that by their fruits you shall know them. And God says it's about holiness in and out. Mm. In and out because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is the question? Okay, the question was, uh, the question was, uh, was how, how you, are, you are still a Christian. Mm. Now as a Christian and uh, the way you are doing, how, how are you thinking God knows you? <coughs> how are you thinking God? Uh, well, frankly, um, I I was convicted. Mm-hmm. I really felt convicted, especially about the anchor and belittling men mm-hmm. and taking advantage of men. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that happened because I think my mom <laughs> was a prayer warrior. Mm-hmm. Maybe she interceded on my behalf because it, it will come on and off. Like I would feel like I, I really need to get saved. And then uh, just for a Uh, like after a week I'm um, there praying I'm there you know not committing sin Pop, I just find myself either into fornication mm. whether anger has taken over me and uh, literally I felt thirsty to just literally shed blood because mm. of the anger so um, it, it I was really convicted but then again it felt a point whereby when this conviction came and I did not act on the conviction i went into a depression whereby the self-hate I, i could spend even three weeks without looking outside of my door mm. three weeks and i felt really pressed really depressed really oppressed like 
I, I really hated myself. I really, really hated myself. I, 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 there was a time even actually when my daughter was pretty like a near, I, I felt like kill her and kill myself. Like the suicidal thing really came. And um, it, it was really bad really really bad because i felt as if every time i tried to pray i felt like i've done so so much that mm -hmm. jesus cannot forgive me like anytime i tried opening my mouth and say you know it uh, these thoughts will just flood in my mind and i would like really quit like i saw myself like i'm done mm -hmm. to some point i felt i could not take public transport like if you, there was this thing that kept telling me if you die right now you're going to hell i knew mm -hmm. there was hell I knew there was hell and I knew the state I was in there was no compromise there was no um, begging I would go straight to hell it's like I was in a cage mm. it's like I was in a cage and there are some things I really because we, I really didn't have like you know from since I was a baby with a you know the we were not so close with my mother mm. I'll just ask you know you know the top you know the normal questions but you know like I'm suffering with this I really felt ashamed approaching her and say mm -hmm. hey you know what am I you know grade one master better you know mm -hmm. I'm like you know I, I really felt like you know I've like really disappointed her and all this and mm -hmm. So the conviction was there, which led to depression because I didn't have roots, because I didn't know where to run to. But I thank God, here I am today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that I have noted from some of the, of the testimonies that uh, you are saying that you are looking how you can be loved, how you can be loved. And the only true love that God can give you, it's the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. But if you are a woman and you are looking how men will love you, mm. you want to be loved. Mm. When you are being loved by the world, you, you become lost. Mm. You become lost. And through that love, the love that the world gives you, it is a love to destroy you. Yes. It's the love to kill you, the love to, to, to destroy your life. So give your life to Jesus and let, uh, let, let, let and know that Jesus loves you. You don't need to be told by and to be lied by men that they love you. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you, and He lead. He's lead. When He say He loves you, He mean it. Amen. And His love, He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't use you, Amen. like how men use you. Mm -hmm. Men use you by telling they love you and they use your body. But Jesus won't use you. Amen. He'll give you eternal life. So turn to Jesus. Amen. He is the true love that you are be. You are searching from men to men. The true love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Another question uh, as I am, we are concluding is this. Uh, what, uh, have you counted the cost since you changed your life and uh, you are now wearing modesty? Have you, are you counting the cost? Which challenges have you passed through? Because uh, I understand that you used to be a journalism, mm -hmm. some fashion designers, some uh, looking like that. Have you counted the cost? Or you're living a normal life? How did people say? Mm -hmm. Just five, five minutes or two minutes, two minutes because of time. Uh, it's for me when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. First of all, you'll have to go through persecution. People will persecute you. They say you're crazy. She's gone nuts. My case, because most of my family members used to think I used to go to Dubai a lot. So they would say maybe I joined a cult or I was initiated into something Islamic thing. Mm -hmm. When they say me covering, see me covering my head and wearing like long dresses, they say maybe something happened to me. Uh, from the UAE. Um, the other thing is separation part. Okay, I would say you just don't wake up and you drop everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus is so loving and he's merciful. Mm -hmm. When you repent and you give your life without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I told Jesus, you know, I am a chronic sinner. And if Lord, you, can, you, you will forgive me. I'll pay the cost. But I don't want to be a hypocrite Christian. I don't want to be a hypocrite because I've learned, I've stayed with the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I want to be a true Christian. I want to be a real Christian. Mm -hmm. So give me what I need, whatever the cost I'll pay. So I quit my job. I quit my job. I began to spend time locked in the house. Just mm -hmm. me, God, me, my Bible praying, mm -hmm. repenting. And God just blessed me. Mm -hmm. It just... He manifested his power in me. Amen. Gave me the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the first time to hear the voice of God. God just, it was amazing how God was molding me. The separation part is not easy. You got to 
pick up your cross and follow Jesus. You go to deny yourself and kill the flesh through fasting, through prayer. It's just everyday life. It's everything you have to do every day. Mm -hmm. I remember the nights that I spend crying to Jesus, please deliver me from the spiritual husband. Deliver me from, I'm going to, when I was having nightmares, sex in the dreams, eating food in the dream, it was too much. I was tired and I needed Jesus to redeem me, to restore me. And guess, everything that Jesus gave me is free. Love is free. Joy is free. Amen. I may not have money in my pocket. I'm happy. I don't have food on the table. Praise Jesus. It, Jesus, my Jesus is not a Jesus of uh, like when there is joy, when they have money, food on the table is when I praise him. No, I praise Jesus with or without because Jesus is done so much for me. Whether he blesses me or not is my God. Whether he delivers me or not is my God and I'm going to serve him. It's not my Jesus that I want Jesus who gives me things of the world. I want Jesus who blesses me with spirit spiritual blessings because in Ephesians 1 4 it says I have blessed you with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places and my focus is in the spiritual things because I know spirit things I am good with God and Amen. that's my joy Amen. to obey Jesus because obedience is the key Amen. Amen. that's good Bible says that if anybody wants to build a tower mm. he sit down and then he determine the cost Amen. he count the cost of that foundation yeah. my sister have you counted the cost Amen. um i have a pastor because when i got saved it was always me and my friend we were called twins so when i got saved i had to separate from her because i remember the other time i tried going back to jesus but she wasn't she wasn't she didn't want to go back so i left jesus because of her so now this time God is saying you cannot, you have to separate. So I lost my, I thought we were going to die together, my, my sister. And then you, you lose friends because right now I don't have any other friends. Of course you lose friends. The only friend you'll ever need is Jesus. He's a dear friend. And the Holy Spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit, you have no time to talk to other people because he is always here saying something. So yes. you, you don't get bored. So, um... Even with the dressing, people will persecute you. You're too young. Why are you making yourself old? How are you going to get a man? How are you going to get married if you cover your body and all that? So you see, you, you, you're being persecuted for the choices you made. And I just want to say this. Maybe this will reach my country, God willing. Because there's some people maybe who know me. They're going to be like, ah, but we know her. We know she, she was all this and then she went to fornication. I, I'm going to say to them, I have changed. In the name of Jesus, just you don't do like me. You be like Jesus. You be like the apostles in the name of Jesus. And you hold on fast. Because I was, I was wearing holy, but inside, inside I was lusting. I wanted to go back to the clubs. When I'm alone in the house, I will dance. I will dance like I'm in the club. And when I go out, I'm all holy and all that. Because inside there was no guilt. I didn't realize these things were wrong. So in, in Galatians verse 7, God is, chapter 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man, a man reap what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. So do not be deceived, my dear sisters. If you reap eternal if you reap sin you will reap eternal destruction if you sow sin you will reap eternal destruction that's why i have changed and i'm going to try to work as hard as i can to atone to what i've done to the name of jesus to make sure that i reap eternal life in the name of jesus amen, amen. amen. that's good hallelujah so you have passed uh, she said that she has passed through persecution let me tell you again when you receive this message, you will have to be persecuted. You have to separate yourself. She lost, so she have counted the lost. You will count the cost of losing brothers, losing sisters, losing uh, friends, losing even job, mm -hmm. losing even uh, your name, how they used to address you. They will, you will lose, but it is better you lose than enter the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says that... Uh, if your hand causes you to sin, it is better that you cut your, your you cut off that hand than to go to hell. You see? Because when you go to heaven with one hand, God will restore to you. There's no disability in heaven. But now, what will profit you and go to hell with all your body parts, all your friend, your work, 
you are whatever you used to do. So it, there is a cause to change. And also she said that uh, people right now, they say when you receive Jesus and when you start dressing well, you are, you are purified. They say you are dressing like an old person. How will you get a husband? Because you are not, an, uh, you are not exposing your, your, your body. Let me ask you a question. Do you, will you get a husband because of exposing yourself like a harot? I am a man, and I am speaking from uh, like a man. Mm. Those who are looking for a woman to marry, they don't look for a woman who is exposing her body part, mm. because they know that those are prostitutes. Mm. They look for a woman that is decent, a woman that cover herself, a woman that is not selling herself. But those that exposes themselves, we call them, they are prostitutes. And so, if you expose yourself to get a, a man, you will not get a man, but you will get a man who is looking for a prostitute. Mm. You see? Mm. So, it is good that you dress modest like a woman. There are those people who are looking for women mm. to marry a good woman, women, not mm. to, pro, not to, to pro, pro, prostitute who come to, 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 to do uh, immorality, yeah, to, to, to kill and to destroy. You see? So, the way you dress, you can get a man who will marry you or the man who will destroy your life mm -hmm. because they thought you are, Christ, uh, you are, you are a prostitute. Mm -hmm. So dressing matters. And if you stay holy and pure, it is God who gives people husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are maintained and there are people who are still there, who are holy and who are righteous. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Sorry, Apostle. Mm -hmm. I forgot my uh, my biggest cost right now. I also had to quit my job like mm -hmm. these ladies. I was working in a milk factory in a lab. That's mm -hmm. a very good paying job in my country. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave because we wear trousers. Wear trousers. So, yes. Here? Yes. Yeah, 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 right here. Yeah, there are people who are in that job. And yes. You are, you, are, you, you are in that company and you dress trousers and you say you are a Christian. Listen to her. So God told, told me, you are not going to make it to heaven with your trousers. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't even pray for my food at lunchtime. Because he was saying, who are you praying to? Who are you calling the name of Jesus for when you're wearing trousers? Because mm -hmm. I had this notion like her that you respect the, the principles of this world. Mm -hmm. When I go out, I'm going to wear my long dresses. And he said, no. I want you with dresses day in, day out, night, every time. You need to, to wear the same, not be something else during the day and be something else during the night. So I also left my job. Now I'm working as a maid, and, and I'm good with that. I'm content because Amen. I have God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, personally, I've counted the costs. Um, I remember before I got rooted to this church, uh, before uh, there are a lot I learned online about revelations mm -hmm. of other people who God used. And um, actually the first attack I got was from my maid, my house help, mm -hmm. whereby um, she went like where we live, it's like a gated community whereby it's like, um, you know, like um, apartments, apartments, and then there's a, you know, there's a road in between. So it's like from the far end to the very last end, um, she went telling people, I'm um, um, Illuminati, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm into a cult. Um, oh, she stopped wearing trousers, she stopped putting on makeup. Oh, this house, there's no watching of, you know, these soap operas she was a fan of. Um, she stopped, she, there used to be alcohol in the house, she stopped, she's married to Illuminati, you know, and all these funny things. And when the very first time when I heard that, um, actually, I laughed. It didn't hurt me. You know, the funny thing, uh, when, when people would provoke me and say ill things about me, I would snap. But when, when, when that report reached to my table, I really uh, laughed and I was like, ah, this is persecution. Or, or rather, if they're saying that, it means I'm doing something in the kingdom of God. Then also my friends, you know, they started WhatsApping each other. Oh, she, I think she's nuts. She's crazy. We need. Actually, some said, we want to come to that church. And I was like, okay, we don't hide anything. You're welcome. Come find for yourself. But you, you know, you, and you, you know, if, if you really fear God, he'll definitely speak to you. Mm -hmm. So I've really counted the cost because if, 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 if what people said out there had mattered to me, I wouldn't have stood mm -hmm. until today. Till today, some people <laughs> talk to me indirectly 
mm. insinuating that I'm into a cult. Mm. And I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, okay, fine. Oh, okay, the, this cult that you talk about, I, I want to be in this cult till I die. Mm. And my children will be in this cult till I die. Mm. So personally, I know it, it really hurts. Some words hurt. But when you know the reward up there, and as my sister said, you have to be sincere. Mm. I was so sincere with God. I'm like, you broke a chain. I don't know when you broke, mm. when you broke it of masturbation, of mm. this, but I know... You know, like this, this, these are sins you've cultivated for the long, like all of your life, because you were born with sin. Since mm -hmm. you were born, there were some habits you picked up, and they became characters. So personally, I I know myself. I know there are some. You know, you don't. A child is not born today and walks tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But as long as you are sincere. As long as you're not hiding anything, mm -hmm. you tell God, I have anger issues. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I have bitterness. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I have issues with lying. I need to stop. And you're not just saying for the sake of saying yeah. it. You're saying it because you want to. You want to. Because you know if he comes at that particular moment, you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. So if he sees the sincerity of your heart, uh, the heaven will move. The heaven will move. I'm telling you the truth. And you have also to be a willing party. Because when, okay, you can say that, but then when that time of being rebuked by the Holy Spirit <laughs> reaches, you still disobedient. How do you expect the Holy Spirit to finish what you are praying to, for him to chop off? You have to walk in obedience. You have to obey the word of god you have if an apostle or you know that your spiritual father or mother comes to give you a warning you have to really tell god okay this and this has you know been said H how am i supposed to go about it mm -hmm. don't go with you know your chest head and you think oh you've made it. you've not made anything mm -hmm. these people took years for them to be where they are to walk with god mm -hmm. you are if you're a baby if you're a baby spiritually accept that don't think don't see, don't have this pride of you up there you up there and since you dress in holy you up there Amen. you still need some pruning Amen. you still need some pruning for you to be perfect mm -hmm. a baby doesn't walk immediately if i i believe for most people who have kids if a child you are there in the delivery room and you are the man and that child pops out of your wife's body and that says hi dad Trust you me, you're not going to even have one second. You will not even know how you reached outside. <laughs> you will run. Um, or if that child pops out and then the next minute he goes and grabs, you know, the hand sanitizer and he sanitizes, you will not be... No, there's always... The, you, that child has to suckle the breast for six months yes, for, to get the immunity. Mm -hmm. That's why you find when, when you are serious with God and you get saved, like roughly I think it's a near. You given that grace, you will not fight any major battles. Yeah. You will you will be enjoying it and feeling yes. Amen. Come after the second year. Mm. Right, left and center, the devil will try to bring you down. Mm. So you you know when you're struggling and you know the gray areas, ask for prayers, be we a willing party to sub to be humble. Amen. To be humble. Mm. Because a child you have to beat beat around so that they can behave. A child will just come and remove the inner wear in front of visitors. You have to pull that child and pinch a little bit. And you know, that's really bad manners. You don't do that. Because that child probably, they think it's okay. You may think, okay, fine, I'm done with makeup. I can shape my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Who told you God didn't know what he was doing when he gave Amen. you those bushy eyebrows? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why God gave you those bushy eyebrows. If you have hairy legs and you're a lady, God knew you were going to be hairy. Amen. Leave it. Amen. Leave it. Just leave it. Amen. If you are as dark as a charcoal, <laughs> as charcoal, Amen. don't go there bleaching and try. No, people say I'm, I'm, I'm darkness walking. They only recognize me when I laugh. Let them. Let them recognize you when you only laugh. Let them do. Let them have that. Amen. So, for the new converts Amen. don't be don't feel feel the challenge but take up your cross Amen. jesus walked yeah. with that cross Amen. and there was someone who helped him just know the uh, uh, representation of whoever helped him is the holy spirit Amen. he'll feel he'll, he'll look at you and you know this child of mine is about to collapse he'll take up the lord Amen. so be humble walk with him listen 
spend time with him mm. just like any other relationship mm. you who are in the world you you who are you know dating you know in a holy you know courtship there is the stage of knowing each other mm. and it happens in spiritual you have to get to know each other with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to know Jesus doesn't like sin. Jesus doesn't like this. He's humble. He's this. Jesus never forces himself on anyone. Amen. But it's different with men. Mm -hmm. You go there with a man, you pour your heart. They know your, your character. They take advantage of your sweetness. They take advantage of your good character. But with Jesus, it's never like that. Amen. It's never like that. Amen. So personally, what I can say is do not be afraid to start that work with God. Make sure before you take that step of faith, I'll nothing. Give you, I'll give you the conclusion. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing should deter you. She will tell them the conclusion. I have mm. one, one, one conclusion. I will give you, and you tell them now. Now she has mentioned about makeups, and about uh, if you are if you are black, then you should remain black as God has given as as God created you. Uh -huh. And that and that was in, is in the Bible, the Word of God, in the book of uh, Isaiah forty five nine. The Bible say. Woe to him who strive with his maker. Mm. Woe to him who strive with his maker. Mm. I say, let the portion strive with the portion of the other. Shall the crazy say to him who form it, what are you making? Mm. You see, when you are making yourself making up, you are black and uh, you want to be white. You are striving with the maker mm. who made you like that. You are striving with your maker, with your creator. You are having a war with your maker. Mm. And let's say, that shall the Christ say to him who forms, what are you making? A clay cannot speak. Mm -hmm. Or shall your handiwork say, he has no hand. Woe to him. You see, the Bible says, woe to him. Woe to him who strive with his maker. So go, stay like that the, the way God has created you. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between white men and black men. Mm -hmm. And God created them for his glory. Yeah. Because for his glory, to glorify him. It is like a flower. The flowers are not always red. There are black flower, white flower, yellow flowers. That is how God created people. Some with long hair, some without long hair. Some with white hair, with, some with, without. Some with uh, those uh, things that you are calling uh, the, the irash. You see, God created them different for his own glory. So that there might be a different with Indians and Africans. Mm -hmm. The hair with the Indians, with Americans with the compression and that is the work of all so leave the way god created you like that because the bible says also that we are fearfully and wonderfully created by god mm -hmm. therefore if you are fearfully and wonderfully created you don't need makeup mm -hmm. god created you wonderfully yeah. may and he made you wonderfully so you should in fact glorify him mm -hmm. you should in fact advertising the natural way that god has he, he has created you with mm -hmm. yeah be proud of how god has created you yes. be proud of your blackness yes. be proud of be crow, uh, pr proud of your whiteness mm -hmm. be proud of every way that mm -hmm. god has created you mm -hmm. and you will praise god Amen. because woe unto those who, who 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 strive with their maker and another thing is this uh these are daughters of god that god has has changed from uh, the Rira to Deborah and their daughters of Zion who have been changed. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, see, Isaiah 3 16, the Bible speaks about them, about them, how they used to be. It speaks because the uh, moreover the Lord says, because the, the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go making a jingling with their feet you see that is how they used to go and they used to wear uh, those high heels high heels are, are in the bible how they used to they are walking walking and mincing as they go making and jingling with their feet and jingling they are walking like cow or like goats that is evil before god and that the, the way with they were walking they are walking to 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 to, to seduce people you see I was also uh, 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 I was also a slave of pornography and masturbation, and I wa I watched so much uh, pornography, and I discovered that all pornography they have high heels. Amen. Why prostitutes high wear, wear high heels because they were wearing for seducing men. That when they were walking with the jingling and uh, and uh, that kind of uh, of a walking, their buttock is sagging and shaking, shaking. That is seducing. So those kind of high heels will take many people to hell. Yeah. Because you are not walking like, like a, a man, but you walk like a goat, like a goat or like an animal, like this, like this, and um, you should walk in good way. Another thing they give us, they give people false height, 
false height. And the Bible says that nothing that is false shall enter the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So be the way you are created. Those things, they prevent people even to worship God in the church. Amen. You find that because somebody is here and that those high not jump. Yeah. He cannot dance for God. He cannot praise for God. You see, because he wear high heel. And those things are, are, are a disgrace even to worship, even to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Another thing you see is also uh, makeup. Those makeup, they hinder people from worshipping. Because when you go to worship God with makeup, you cannot even cry, cry before God. Mm -hmm. You cannot broke, bro break your heart. Mm -hmm. Because when you cry, you will pollute the makeup. Mm -hmm. So you find them, they, 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 they cry like this. <laughs> you see? They are crying like that, <laughs> as if, <laughs> as if they are they are doing some kind of operation, <laughs> and like this, you see. And they are not comfortable. They are not comfortable. They cannot even sing uh, until uh, they have touched the glory of God. They don't want to sweat. They don't, don't want to cry. They don't want to kneel down to, before God to give uh, to break before God because of those makeup. And that is pride. It brings pride yeah. that you cannot do those things. Yeah. That is things that are hindering the presence of God in the church. Amen. Because of how proud people are. They, they, they don't want to worship God because of how they are. How, because of their makeup. Those are things that are not glorifying God. You see, mm -hmm. the Bible says, Moreover, because the daughter of Zion are haughty and walk with outraced neck and wanton eyes, walking and missing as they go, making a jingling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will strike with a scab. With the, we will strike them with a scab and the, the crown of the head of the daughter of Zion and the Lord will uncover their sacred part. Mm -hmm. God will say, uncover their sacred part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uncovering their sacred part. Mm -hmm. And then he say, in that day the Lord will take away the finery, uh, finery and the jingling uncrent, the scarves, the crescent and the pendants and the bracelets and the veils and the headdresses and the leg ornaments and the headbands and the perfume boxes and charms. You see? Mm. The perfume boxes and charms. They use perfume even like charms. Mm. Some perfume are, are used like charm. Mm. To charm people. <laughs> oh. And the links and the nose jewelries mm. and the festal apparels and the martyrs and the outer garment of person and the mirrors and the fine linen and the turban and the robes. And so it shall be instead of sweet smell Sweet yes. perfume. It is shall, they will be. They will stench. There will be a stench. Mm. God will strike them. Instead of a such rope, instead of a well set here, baldness. It shall be a baldness. Instead of a rich rope, it shall be a baldness. And God is striking them with the baldness today. Mm. Many women, because of they used to wear, they used to do mm. chemical. Mm. They, they are now bald. Mm. They are now bald. They are becoming bald. Bald women, mm. because of what they used to do. Mm. You see. The, the, the result of, uh, of sowing in sin, mm. you will reap baldness. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. So they are reaping what they, they were. And they are, they, they, they are now bald women because of what they were using chemicals. And then he's saying, instead of sweet smell, there will be a stench. Instead of a such rope, instead of a well set here, there will be baldness. Instead of a rich rope and a giddying of a sacroth, they wear sacroth, and a branding instead of a beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty men in war. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So God is saying there is a judgment that is coming for all those women, and they surely they shall be punished by God. So I would want only to give you the last uh, answer, the last question, and ask you, how would you tell those women that are listening right to you right now? There are women who are listening to you right now from everywhere in the world. They are listening. They want to hear the last word that you, you would tell them. And there are also those that are, were, were, are living in your past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you came out there, you left them. Mm -hmm. So they are there. Mm -hmm. So you need to tell them what to do. You need to encourage them. The last message. My dear sisters, maybe brothers out there. Um, I want to encourage you and maybe tell you the truth though I will not sugarcoat nothing for the life that we were living that I was living mm -hmm. I gained nothing mm -hmm. and if you want Jesus Christ to manifest his power in your life you mm -hmm. got to believe mm -hmm. you got to change you got nobody's going to force you to believe in Jesus mm -hmm. nobody's going to force you to cover your head to put on to be holy nobody's going to to force you to be who God wants you to be it's up to you to choose which path you want to follow choose the path that you want to follow you you know we are here for a short time mm -hmm. 
We are just passing by. Yeah. Today, how many people have died? Today, so many people have died. You are still alive. You think that life you have today is your life. How long are you going to take to realize that the love you're living today, you're not living it for yourself? Mm -hmm. You need to understand that you're living for Christ. He created you for his glory. So you must manifest his power and his glory to be seen in you. You must give yourself as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And when you invite Jesus, he is not God. You see, in the world, you're told, oh, Jesus, look at the heart. Just spare us. Spare us that okay. deception. Mm -hmm. God does not only look at the heart. Jesus, remember the word also says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How can God be dwelling in a temple that is unclean? Mm -hmm. It has to be sanctified and made holy. You, you have to get rid of the things that belong to the devil. Mm -hmm. These two kingdoms cannot mix. Light and darkness will never mix. Mm -hmm. they, they cannot mix. So you must choose. If you want to walk in the light, Jesus comes into your heart. He is not going to stay in your heart. You are not going to control. Jesus. You have to let Jesus minister to you. Mm -hmm. You have to allow Jesus to come to what you see, what you listen to, mm -hmm. what you are thought to change your thoughts and to give you a heart that without fear, mm -hmm. a heart without bitterness, yes. offense and unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. You have to let go of the things of the world. Mm -hmm. You have to separate yourself and feel experience freedom. You know what? There is happiness. There is freedom. There is joy in Christ. You see today, I am the happiest person living. Mm -hmm. It is not because I have the things of the world. It's because I have experienced the supernatural world. It is true. It is divine. And only this can happen when you focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. Focus on Jesus. Nothing is too hard for him. He does everything. If you could take me from a dung hill just to bless me and just to forgive me with spiritual gifts and his anointing and power, today I will not be seated here talking to you. But because of his love. It is because of his love and how much he loves you. So stop feeling like you are lost. You are not. There is a God in heaven who loves you. Even when everybody runs away from you. I lost my friends. But you see, God is the best friend. I lost everybody. My family thinks I'm cuckoos. I'm crazy. But I'm not crazy. This is the power of God in me. Sometimes I want to come out of my body and stand there and look at myself and see the glory of God. How he's done in my life. And Jesus is real. Stop listening to people. People are telling you other things. Listen to Jesus. Don't listen to people's opinion. Opinion of men are taking you to hell. Listen to the opinion of God. What God says about you, you are who God says you are. Yeah. You have what God says you have. Yeah. It is not what people say you have. Yes. Don't do what people are doing in the world. Mm -hmm. Do what God says you can do and you will prosper. Listen to the servants of God. Pray for discernment. Ask Jesus to guide you to the people who are sent for your destiny. Pray for that. And God is going to guide you. He will not let you go. He will not forsake you. And all this makeup and all this stuff is just a deception. You are more beautiful on the inside. From inside, outside, who God created you to be, be that mm -hmm. and be grateful. Thank God and be content be what you have. Don't envy, don't have jealousy and don't listen to the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming back soon. Prepare your heart to receive Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Prepare. Christ is coming. Rapture is ready. Be ready for rapture. Nothing that is unholy will be come will come in the kingdom of god repent jesus is coming soon i say again repent christ is coming back soon Amen. we are living in the end time stop wasting time he is coming he is coming Amen. in jesus name Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. repentance is a must in Amen. jesus name to be saved well i'd like to say to the man of God and to the woman of God, anybody who has authority or a position in the church of Jesus, stop leading people to distraction. Because I was in the church, nobody told me about my short skirt, nobody said anything about my, my artificial hair. I was actually told to wear those things. So stop leading people to distraction because you will have to answer about their souls because there's people who are really searching for Jesus, but they come up across the shepherd, the false shepherds who leads them to distraction. So change your ways, repent, and tell them again what they're supposed to do and stop thinking you'll lose people. People will go out if you preach too harshly or if you preach too holy. People will leave you. You are not called by people you called by god and Amen. god is not a respecter of any person in the name of jesus so to all the other christians out there listen to this message we're not telling you to wear holy or to leave all the other things because we want you to be old-fashioned if you can look back in history when you go back women used to wear 
long things everything to the sleeve up here it only changed the devil only changed so now yes it twisted so now we're growing up in a generation where all those things wearing like this people will say you're in a cult people are supposed to applaud us because we we're vicious women we're not making any men last with us in the name of jesus so we're asking you to bring back that holiness message to bring back the revival and to every other woman who's still held up by the jezebel spirit Come to Jesus. He can free you. Jesus can free you in the name of Jesus. He can. His blood washes everything. He washed my sin. I thought nobody could wash. He freed me from every demonic spirit. Even at night, the demon will wake you up and say, now you masturbate. You will look for pictures. If you didn't have airtime or data, you would you would be stressed. You'd go around wanting airtime just to get on the internet and, and, and masturbate. Mm. So Jesus can free you. Now you sleep when you say you can sleep. You wake up to pray it's a very simple life people ask you so you don't watch tv you don't listen to listen to any music your life is very boring and you're like this is how it was meant to be in the beginning yeah. and the devil came and twisted so let's go back to what god how god wanted this world to be thank you and i love you all Amen. okay what i can say to everyone who's watching and i'll i'll really emphasize on what she said mm -hmm. to the men and women of god Stop sugarcoating. Amen. Stop sugarcoating the gospel. Yes. That church is not a bakery. Mm. That is a holy altar. Mm. God has given you a duty. Can you perform, please? Mm. For the sake of the souls which are... Every second, millions and souls are going to hell. Mm. People out there do not know that this worldliness is a sin. Yes. Please preach the undiluted gospel. Amen. You are not a baker. That church is not a bakery. Mm. Preach. Even if you have two people Amen. attending the church, let, let, let go to heaven and say, Father, I brought these mm. two souls. Amen. Rather than preaching to thousands, mm. and all of you will be burning in hell, and they will be pointing fingers at you. Amen. It's really sad. And I don't know who, who else is listening, but if you are listening to this, this could probably could be the last chance. There is no repentance in hell. Yes. The minute your spirit comes out of your body, that's it. If you die in sin, you are going straight to hell. It sounds so bad, but that's the reality. I will not lie to you. It is the reality. Please go on your knees and ask God. To just repent. He's a merciful God. Probably you are to die in the next three days. But if you repent, Jesus will say no. She's, she was just born. I, I, she cannot be killed. Yeah. I want to nurse her. Amen. I want to nurse her. I want her to become a prophet. I want her, him to become an evangelist. Mm. So please, do not take this as a joke. There's no repentance in hell. Mm. And that's why the word of the Lord said, many are called, mm. but few. Amen. Very few are chosen. Mm. Why? Because it costs. Amen. It costs, mm. even with your own blood, to enter heaven. Mm be blessed hallelujah thank you jesus mm -hmm. that is super uh, that is a powerful testimony mm -hmm. that they says and uh, it shakes it shakes my heart it trembles my heart as a man of god to hear that they were lost and there were people who are reading after them they were shepherd who are reading after them and looking after them but they were going to hell so i see that the men of god they need to wake up and to kick out jezebel wildness out of the church because what i have learned here is that wildness is what was taking over over their life and they were going astray as a result of copying the people of the world this sister said that she was copying Rihanna. She was copying even uh, Nicki Minaj. She was copying, and I also, I was copying uh, uh, this man who, who called himself Lil Wayne and Chris Brown, drawing tattoo, and I was doing like them. So whoever you, you, you are introduced, whoever you love, you want to do like them. Amen. They that you are, whatever you are watching, you find that you are doing like them. Yes. So we should be careful of worldliness. What you, what you see, what you follow, the songs that you hear, mm -hmm. what you are following, the celebrity that you are following, and most of the celebrity, they are people who are in the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we should not love the world, mm -hmm. but the church of Christ has come into a point whereby they do not have interest with Christ, that they are now, uh, they are now uh, desiring the world. Mm -hmm. Instead of desiring Jesus, they are desiring the world. What is there that in the church that now they are desiring the world more than Jesus? 
and the world should be they that are desiring us. The world should be learning from us, not we. We are learning from the world. We are copying the world. We sh the world should, be, should copy us. But you see, they were copying the world. Let me end it here with, the, with this word. In the book of 1 John 2.15, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If any loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And Amen. it's sure what they were wearing, how they were doing their lifestyle, that means they did not have the love of the Father. They did not have the love of God. See, and the still they claim they were Christian. So when you love the world, the love of God is not in you. When you love the fashions of the world, the love of, the, of God is not in you. And the Bible says, For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh. That is what we hear that what was in the world what they were chasing after the last of the flesh and then the last of the eyes and then the pride of life those are the things that are in the world the pride of life because of money the last of the flesh the the the, the desires of the body the evil desires of the body to satisfy the desires of the body those are the things that are in the world and we should come out from the things of the world we should leave away wilderness we should kick away wilderness out of the church if we want to see the kingdom of god because without hope Holiness, we cannot see the kingdom of God. And God says that he, he is holy. And holy means separated. He is very separated. So if for you to walk with God, you must separate yourself from the world. Because worldliness is the greatest spot in the church today. It is the greatest spot that is taking people to hell. Worldliness in clothes. Worldliness in the preaching. Worldliness. They are preaching like the world. They are dressing like the world. Watching like the world. Eating like the world. Doing like the world. Let us copy the word of God. Instead Amen. of the world, let us copy the word of God Amen. and follow Jesus Christ. Amen. And then he said, for all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. 17. Amen. And the world is passing away, and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abide forever. The world is passing away. The fashions are passing away. And even your strength, your, your, your strength, your pride, your money, they will all pass away. But he who does the will of God will live forever and will, uh, will, and will go, and the Bible says, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us abide forever in the word of God because Amen. everything will come to an end and Jesus Christ is coming Amen. for the because the kingdom of God is near. We should be preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus. For Jesus is not coming for the bride of the world. He's not coming for a prostitute. He's coming for the bride, holy bride. A bride of Jesus Christ who is holy, washed by the word of God. She lives by the word of God. She walks by the word of God and she walks by the word of God. Everything is the word of God. From the head to the toe, it is the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is who the, the Jesus is coming from. Not a worldly blood, but a holy blood. Let us pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty Father, our God, our Savior, we come before you, Jehovah. We praise you for this, O oh God, interview. We praise you for this testimony, Lord. And we pray, Jehovah, that whoever they were watching, Jehovah God, transform their life because we were slaves of the Satan. We were slaves of the world, but we have now been uh, set free by your grace. The same grace that set free us, the same grace that set those these children free, is the same grace that will set them free in the name of Jesus. Rescue them. Rescue, rescue them from the captivity of the devil, from the love of the world and give them a love to love you. Separate them from the world, from sin, from immorality, from prostitution, from masturbation, from pornography, from worldliness, from fashion spirit, from Jezebel spirit and from mammoth spirit, from the pre prince and the queen of coast. Separate them in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty Jehovah God, we pray, Father, that the this message, we impart them, we increase them, we purify them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in this hour. What you have started, no man can stop. Any power of devil and any spirit of the devil trying to attack the testimony of the beloved and trying to attack their life and they that will change, let it be cast down in the name of Jesus Christ. And every power and every spirit 
coming against the word of God, coming against this message, we bind you, we arrest you, we bring you down in Jesus' name. And we cover the word, the testimony, the brethren, by the blood of Jesus Christ, that the same way they testify you, they shall not go back. They shall testify you in the kingdom of heaven, in the name of Jesus, that none of them will fail, none of them will backslide. They shall overcome by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. We glorify the name of the living God and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and even believe. Amen, 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 amen. 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 God bless you all amen. in Jesus' mighty name. And don't amen. forget that we shall have a group for women, for Holy Bride women who amen. want to change. And that this movement, these uh, women or this group is not is non-denomination. It's not for certain church. It's for all people. Because all people, all women are called to be holy, holy women, holy blood of holy blood women. So if you are a woman, you are interested with this message, you would like to fellowship with, with these women, you can join them. You can join them uh, through this number of WhatsApp. You can join them and you you will be you 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 will be uh you'll be joined in that group of holy blood women who are preparing for the righteousness, they are testimony, they are daughters of Zion, daughters of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Get the end-time writings of Apostle Simon Geshinga, a humble end-time messenger with an apostolic wisdom of the Word of God and end-times revelations. Preparing the Bride of Christ for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in complete holiness and graciousness. Go to Play Store Android application and search Apostle Simon Gishinga. Click and download the application. All messages are offline once you download them. Receive back the ancient word of God reviving the saints for the kingdom of God by inspired living word of God. Search Apostle Simon Gishinga on Play Store application.